This is a HeadGum Podcast. Greetings, Nadpoles. It is I, the Breakfast Wizard, here to talk to you about Magic Spoon, the sacred artifact I use to cast my serial mancy spells. After years of... Oh, what's that? Ah, oh, it turns out this is an ad for Magic Spoon the Serial, not by Spellcasting Focus. As such, I'm going to let Caldwell take over. Ta-ta! Hey gang, Caldwell here. Sorry about that. Real quick, here is what you need to know. Birthday Cake Flavor is back. That's right, this limited edition cereal was so popular that Magic Spoon brought it back, and now you can get it for yourself. For a limited time, Magic Spoon is offering a free box of birthday cake cereal with every purchase, including subscriptions. This cereal is normally $10, so this gift with purchase is a great deal. To take advantage of this offer, head to magicspoon.com slash pawpawbday to grab a custom bundle of cereal and get a free box of birthday cake and try the magic for yourself. Remember, this exclusive offer is only available to NADPOD listeners. So go to magicspoon.com slash pawpawbday to add a free box of birthday cake to any order. Magic Spoon is so confident in their product, it is backed with a 100% happiness guarantee. So if you don't like it for any reason, they will refund your money, no questions asked. Okay, the Breakfast Wizard is still loose in my house somewhere, so I have to go. Thanks for listening, and see you next time. Welcome to the campaign after the campaign. This is not another D&D podcast. Welcome back to Bohemia, everyone. Bohemia. Bohemia. I'm your dungeon master, Brian Murphy, joined by Jake Hurwitz. Jivlin. <laughs> <laughs> Emily Axford. Moonshine Sabin, decimator of dolls. <laughs> <laughs> and Caldwell Tanner. <gasps> Beverly Tobol V. Attacula of Draculas. Nice. <laughs> yeah. Very yeah. good. Sure, yeah. sure. And of course, our very special returning guest, Brennan Lee Mulligan. Dead Eye Sabin, religion resistor who loves his sister. Oh, oh stop! Oh my God. Oh, I weep misty dead eye tears. <laughs> God, God Sad burns. vapors, burning sad vapors. And you're going to put that in hell? Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we left on quite a cliffhanger last time, so let's get right into it. Uh, let's do a little recap. So last week, you guys ambushed Beau Montgomery at the Red Fen, then holed up in a nearby abandoned home to rest. Uh, during the night, Deadeye revealed to Moonshine that he'd had a contentious relationship with Old Cobb, who was hesitant to train him as a youngin. Deadeye sold his soul to the Dark Lord of Shadowfell so that he could aid in the fight against Maribel, causing a rift between him and the Crick elves. During your talk, you saw Langston and a crew of whites heading downtown and eventually saw smoke coming up from the church. You awoke Bortram, who informed you that the church protected the urns through which the revenants regenerated. You made your way there and found that the church had been burned down and one of the urns was lost. You finished your night's sleep, then began your assault on the Montgomery compound. Moonshine Misty stepped up to the second floor and helped you all up. Then you entered Grimhawk Manor through a terrifying little girl's room full of living dolls. Uh, you made your way out to the connecting living room and found the girl, Priscilla Montgomery, and her older sister, Dolly, surrounded by dozens of living dolls. To make matters worse, Dolly and Priscilla appear to be grafted together, and the former wears the latter like a terrifying skin graft baby Bjorn. And that's where we are now. You are face to faces with these mm. twisted mm. sisters. Uh, and they're... Nice, dude. Uh, do they use sister mister? <laughs> uh, they, they do. They have um, little, little beards. Product um, placement. Very good. Very uh, good. Yes. Um, Sweet as. <laughs> everybody go ahead and roll initiative. Oh, man. Hey. We're getting Woo-hoo. right into it. That'll be a nat one. Way to start it off. Hmm. Oh, Feeling no. fresh. It's going to be a nine. So 22. I got a, a five. It's going to be an 18. All right. Deadeye with mortal numbers. Oh. Ooh. Disgusting rolling, sub-20s. Rolling garbage on these. <laughs> you know, a nat, I think I got an 18 on a nat 4. You got to give me that. Ooh. All right. I'll give you that. 
JV, you are first. Um, you are in this um, horrifying living room of the um, Montgomery Mansion. Uh, wooden floors, hieroglyphics, uh, written out in blood, candles everywhere, and swarms of living dolls, many living dolls. And um, this little vampire girl attached to this um, young vampire woman. Yes, I, I find it quite odd, quite <laughs> unpleasant. I haven't met you before. Oh, I dislike when you talk We're to me. We're so happy to have you as a guest. Come play with us. Their happiness makes me quite sad. <laughs> it's going to make me angry. I'm going to go into a rage. Okay. And uh, I'll swing my axe at the little one. Okay. <laughs> you remind me a lot of my friend Hard One. He always goes after the weakest. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a brave man. <laughs> I'll, do a, I'll do a reckless attack. Okay. Ooh. Uh, 27. Uh, that hits. Cool. Is there a reason you're targeting the smaller of us? Uh, you, you are the most creepy. <laughs> <laughs> the one that's so to you is, is a bit more creepy to me. Oh, so JV, when I went after the doll, you thought that was the right thing to do? Oh, yes. Okay, good, good. <laughs> thought that was brave. <laughs> <laughs> his priorities are weird, but, you know, his head's in the right place. Uh, 27. 27 damage? Yes. Wow. Good for you. Oh, yeah. Uh, you're a zealot, I'm a right? zealot. A zealot I'm barbarian. A zealot. So he gets to do extra damage on his first attack. Look at that fervor. Yes. What do you feel zealous for? I feel zealous for uh, killing this little creepy gal. <laughs> In the dusk, mother, right, son? Yes. Oh, yes, yes. You have, yeah. you have his answer. My, he said it was for my, killing. My, my, my dust, no, my, my dust mum. For, for my being dust a mum. shield. For being a shield out you know, here, buddy. I'm starting, I'm starting to see dead eyes point. I think it's coming from you, JV. <laughs> Yeah, well, it's well, it's coming from all, all of us working together, all right? Okay, I can I'll get behind that. that. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, sir. Uh, it's a 29. To hit? Yeah. Super hit. Just don't worship teamwork to the point where teamwork becomes the name of a deity who will punish you. <laughs> it's another 12. Sweet. All done um, to the to the little gill. You slash into like the skin between the two of them, um, and you see it rips into the like black uh, dress that the uh, older girl is wearing. The fabric rips open, and there's all this like weird movement of weird like tentacle looking organs and stuff. Okay, it's, it's scarier than I thought. <laughs> uh, just so you know, eleven of that was um, radiant damage. Ooh, nice. yeah. Okay. That's my little uh, zealot. Yes, because I am so, I have a hard on for the dust mother. <laughs> <laughs> we don't talk, we don't say it like that, but we do have. Yes, we have. Ah, no, sexuality hard-on. is an expression of right. love and appreciation. Okay, all right. Mm-hmm. Hanging all right. out with this with this group is right. rubbing yeah. off on me. I think we all find <laughs> our quite deity. impressionable. Uh, <laughs> this will make you question your faith in God. Um, four swarms of dolls are going to run forward. <laughs> we need to protect our mommy. Oh, uh, wow. And hop. Four swarms of dolls hop up on JV and start stabbing with little butcher knives. Oh, <laughs> Melora. Oh, you that's no good. See. Melora, don't, don't y'all feel like we're too good to be fighting these <laughs> dolls, and yet here we are? Uh, uh, first uh, swarm hits for uh, seven damage. Um, and then go ahead and give me a constitution saving throw. Ooh, I have advantage on these in, uh, in my rage. This is just obscene to see these little dolls swarming this noble <laughs> man. Protect the mommies. 23. Uh, 23, that passes, so you'll only take half of this poison damage. Down at the crib, we don't do we do not do dolls. Uh, we know not to teach our children to uh, infantilize and playhouse. Like 11, 11 damage uh, uh, total for the poison, so half of that, so we'll do five. Beverly definitely had at least one of these dolls. <laughs> He had like a little oh. boy doll that was like wearing a Victorian <laughs> oh, frock. A little um, gentleman. <laughs> doll, uh, next swarm of dolls misses. Third swarm of dolls misses. Fourth swarm of dolls miss. Um, they're all just jumping all over you and you're just swatting away at them. They're frightening, but they're not very strong. JV, just <laughs> avoid hitting the Prissy Percy. That was my favorite as, as a boy. <laughs> oh, you, you, see, you see the little girl like next to all these like weird like fucking worms that are coming out of the main girl uh, looks at you and she's like, oh, I love Prissy Percy. Yeah, I love all his accessories that you can get. He's got a fancy little hat. And oh, he's, over, oh, he's over there. Come... He's stabbing your friend. Say oh, hello. No, you see Prissy Percy, Percy just like uh, swinging down on doesn't, JV. Doesn't Prissy Percy come with his own uh, live-in doctor? <laughs> <laughs> who tends to all his frail needs. Of course, yes. He, he goes to the seaside every summer yeah. and sits in a wicker wheelchair. <laughs> That's Deadeye's turn. Uh, cool. Uh, uh, Deadeye's going to look over at, uh, at Moonshine real quick and basically be like, 
we want to go all out on this one or we want to save some in the tank for the big guy? I personally think we keep some in the tank. All right. Um, I think we got I think we got Ambrose in our future, and we got two other cool. vampires. And you guys, you guys do kind of get the sense from when JV slashed into um, the girl vampire, the little girl. Um, you saw like organs exposed and stuff, and it looks like they are the same beast. Mm. Uh, oh, okay. so, so in other words, not that not that Deadeye would understand it this way, but their hit point total appears to maybe be the same hit point yeah. total. Cool. Mm-hmm. Um, Deadeye is going to fire on the the dual vampire yeah, monstrosity. They, like, they look like a monster. So let's say I didn't attack the child. I attacked the, I attacked the monster. <laughs> no, we saw well, you attacked me. Yeah, I, I believe you stated your intention pretty clearly. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, Reba's coming out. We're going to do, a, and they haven't acted in combat yet, right? Uh, correct. Uh, so Reba's going to come out. This is going to be a violent shot. Sweet. Uh, that's going to be a 28 to hit. Uh, sweet. Hits. 51 points of damage on the first <laughs> attack. Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you see um, part of her shoulder like blows off with the explosion and these weird like worm-like tentacles uh, start coming out of her arm. Uh, and then uh, uh, gonna uh, whip Reba uh, over my back, over my shoulder, uh, draw Luann and fire with Luann. Sweet. Uh, 20 to hit. Hits. Uh, that's gonna be a uh, 22 damage on the second attack. Uh, sweet. Man, I'm glad we decided to hang out with you. <laughs> uh, that is uh, Dolly and Priscilla's turn. Uh, you see they both look up at uh, all of you guys in the room with them, uh, and they go, It's so fun to play with our guests! Uh, everybody, go ahead and give me a, an intelligence saving throw. Ooh. Ooh, rare. And I am proficient in it, but I have zero intelligence. Oh. Oh no! Yeah, bitch. Nineteen. Guess who's smart now? I got a twenty, baby. Uh, fourteen. I don't suppose a ten saves. No, it does not. <laughs> did you, uh, Brennan? Did you add four to that? Oh, I don't suppose right. a fourteen saves. Uh, it does not. Oh, cool. <laughs> hey, buddy. Oh, so I actually technically have a twenty-three then. The only people who save are Moonshine and um, JV. Wow. Uh, Bortram and Balnor also fail. So this is not a a charm effect, is it? No, this is psychic damage. It's almost as if like you can feel the audio waves like in the air in front of you um, as you get this like psychic attack uh, on you for... It's like when your sister yells to get you in trouble. (laughs) Yeah, they tell on you uh, to their dad. (laughs) No! Uh, you guys take 27 psychic damage. Oh, boy. Um, and you are all stunned until um, you pass an intelligence saving throw at the end of your turn. That is Bev's turn. Okay, I guess I'll just try and break the... Right on. The effect? Yeah. I'm going to re-roll that one. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Arguably lucky. Uh, 17? 17 passes. Yay! Do I get to take a turn now, or am I done? Uh, no, that's the end of your okay. turn. Okay. Um, so, Bev, you uh, you feel like your equilibrium's like totally off. Your eardrums are bleeding. <gasps> My tinnitus. Um, but you you focus up, and uh, <gasps> you're all good now. Okay. And then, Bev, at the end of your turn, they are going to use a legendary action. Great. Um, Indoor voices are going to use a tentacle on JV. Uh, who's uh, already <laughs> surrounded by dolls. Today's uh, bad enough. Misses. Uh, misses. Great. Would you say it. this is your worst day in Shadowfell so far? Yes. <laughs> it's, it's my worst worst day in a long time. And I was mauled by a possum. <laughs> really saying something. That is Balnor's turn. Balnor is going to re-roll his uh, intelligence saving throw. Fucking nat 19. Balnor kicks yeah, out buddy. of it. Uh, that is Bortram's turn. Bortram is going to try to kick out of it. Natural eight, that's not going to do it. Dolly and Priscilla are going to take another legendary action, another tentacle attack on JV. Why not? That one is going to hit 23. It's like a totally smooth tentacle, or are there suckers on it? Uh, there are suckers oh, on it. So God. basically, uh, yeah, you guys have seen as like Dead Eye like has- Are wet for some reason? Super wet. Okay. <laughs> super wet and gooey, very gooey. You see as- so descriptive. Um, as they've been axed, 
waxed and uh, shot. You've seen these like worm-like tentacles coming out of them, very wet and gooey and kind of holding them apart. Um, one shoots out, has like a little sucker and little mouth on the end of it, um, wraps around uh, our friend JV here. It's always sucking with y'all, huh? And yeah, does 16 second. damage. Is that halved? Um, I'm raging. It is psychic damage. Oh, so no. 16 mm. psychic Ooh. damage. So you feel very bad about that. You feel upset. <laughs> oh, you feel no. depressed. I feel a, a bit depressed. Um, and you are <laughs> grappled right now. Um, you are still going to be able to attack, but you can't move. You are not stunned yet, but you need to give me an intelligence saving throw. Okay. It's 19. 19 does it. Yes. Um, J- JV, you're just like too positive. Uh, it, can't, <laughs> it can't affect you that much. Um, you are not stunned. You are just grappled. Um, that is... Ozzy. Ray of sunshine. Moonshine, that is your turn. Okay, so I'm going to go use my action to enter a fungal state. Have I done this in front of Dead Eye yet? No, I don't think so. Ooh. Oh, Dead Eye, hey, you're in for a little treat. <laughs> <laughs> it's so cool. My brain is on fire. Do you like it or hate it? I love it. <laughs> um, and then I'm going to use my... And then I'm gonna use my bonus action to misty step over to the this uh, double sister. Okay. Um, and I want to like misty step over, so I'm like literally backpacking them. Okay. To try and like distract them from other people, and then while I'm there, I'll spores them for twelve with my reaction. Sweet. Um, you get up behind them. Uh, you do a bunch of damage. Uh, you see, uh, they do not like that one bit. Um, they begin to like shudder. Uh, and you see, as you do your spores, some like little like baby worms start like rotting and dying and falling apart. Uh, yeah, ah, get off my back, know. you little weirdo. <laughs> <laughs> we don't want to play with you. Yeah. They think really? you're a weirdo. So sweet at first. No. Get off your bizarre pedestal. By the time I'm done with you, you won't have enough dolls to fill a house. <laughs> So you won't have enough Don't dolls to Don't take my dolls away. You won't have enough dolls to pilot take my dolls a Barbie away. Corvette. I'm uh, going to use a legendary action to try to use a tentacle on Moonshine. Uh, and hits. Uh, Moonshine, go ahead and give me an intelligence saving throw. 20. 20. Dope. Um, you do not get stunned, but you are grappled, and you take 17 psychic damage. Okay. Um, as, but that uh, comes out of my temporary hit points. So yeah, you see like a full... Um, arm style tentacle comes out from like uh, one of their back shoulder blades and wraps around you oh. um, and you are being like held up in the air now JV's being held up on the other side uh, Balnor and Bev have just gotten their um, wits back about them and Deadeye and fucking Fortrum's ears are ringing and are just like holding their like broken eardrums and uh, trying to get their equilibrium back um, that is JV's turn sweet um I'm surrounded you, you by can, dolls, you, and you are surrounded by dolls, and you are in a tentacle. Okay, um, you can attack uh, and um, attack either the dolls or attack the uh, girls, um, but you can't move. Okay, I'll attack the girls. Great. I hate these creepy vampires. <laughs> uh, so I'm gonna swing. I'm gonna do another reckless attack on, on these girls. Don't you mean Draculas? These Ugly Draculas. <laughs> Another 20. God, I would have crit so many times this hard one right Aww. now. I miss my boy. But it's 29. Uh, super hits. 29? 29 damage. Jeez. Um, I'll say, uh, JV, you slash right through the tentacle, um, and you just see this like burst of goo goes all over you, uh, um, and you are dropped onto the ground uh, wrestling with all these dolls, uh, but the uh, tentacle's uh, down. I hate dolls. I hate the dolls. <laughs> Creepier than the humans. What do you think about tentacles, though? Uh, they, they're better than possums. <laughs> You did da- radiant damage, though, right? Oh, yeah, that was Yeah, nice. so they, they don't regenerate at the top of their turn. Um, so I can attack either the dolls or the girls again, right? Uh, yes. Uh, I'll, go f- I'll go for the little one. Great. Start small. Great thought. 21. Uh, hits. 16. Uh, starting to look pretty hurt. Um, she continues to look more and more monstrous. You see at this point, worms and tentacles and just, uh, she's becoming more and more bestial, and you just see the faces of, uh, these two girls. Mm. Uh, that is 
the swarm of dolls turn. <laughs> uh, the dolls are going to continue to right. stab at our good friends. Quite right. We don't like playing with you. You're no fun at all. <laughs> Neither are you. But being name, honest. What? So what's going on? Are, are, when you're stabbing him, are you playing him or are you not playing with him? What's the logic here? <laughs> we <laughs> like what? to play, but not, we play with the... Not the, a great game. Walk me through <laughs> yeah. this. Okay. God. Yeah, it's, what's your ideal play day? Uh, only one of them hits. <laughs> Uh, go ahead and give me a constitution saving throw. Nobody should be playing with these dolls. They are collector's items, and they should be on display in a Lucite case. Uh, 24. <laughs> uh, 24 passes. Uh, so you take two regular damage, and then you are going to take only half of eight poison damage. You take four poison damage. Um, yeah, you see the knives have, um, like, fucking green goo on them, just, like, <laughs> dipped in poison. You just call little... that a knife? <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. where, where were you from again? <laughs> uh-huh. Uh-huh. What's that, mate? Uh, that is Deadeye's turn. Deadeye, um, go ahead and give me an intelligence saving throw. Get him! No, no bonus actions or anything else on this turn? No. Mm. Ooh, 13 plus 6 is 19. Uh, plus you... 4. Well, yeah. no, I'm including okay, the plus 4. Yeah. Oh, you nice. kick out of it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's uh, my brother, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, oh, some of my brains, I can feel they're coming down my throat. <laughs> <laughs> work them back, work them back. Yeah, I can actually see it coming down your throat. <laughs> uh, that's ain't too bad. Pop your ears, I think that'll help. Uh, good mushroom, I love it. <laughs> yeah, thank you, Heidi, yeah, that is the real me. Um, Moonshine, you have um, one of these tentacles wrapped around you. Yeah. Uh, you see uh, the ends of them have like little mouths and little like vampire fangs and are gonna try to take a bite into what you. What kind of damage is that gonna be? Um, uh, it doesn't matter because it does not hit. Um, you're able to like move your head out of the way. That's right. You want to eat a piece of the mushroom, but you can't. Uh, and then it is going to take another tentacle attack at, um, let's say our friend JV, who's on the ground here. Um, right. Hits. Yes. Uh, go ahead and give me an intelligence saving throw, uh, JV. 23. Uh, cool. You are not um, stunned, but you are grappled again, and you take 19 damage. 19, eh? Uh, that is Bev's turn. All right. Um, Beverly is, is TO'd because they are disrespecting the memory of Prissy Percy, Delightful Desmond, Fanciful Ferdinand, and the entire Bohemia Boys collection. <laughs> oh, yeah, I saw that you in a magazine You see Fanciful Ferdinand looks up at you. Why? We're having fun. <laughs> no, this is fun. <laughs> Just stabbing down. You work with your papa on the farm. It's yeah, a bad game. We, you've bad had a hard game. life. We, we work on the farm, and then at night, we come alive, and we kill people. Again, no. I just want to say this is why down at the creek, youngins don't play with dolls. <laughs> You know, they uh, play they, with... They're much more, much more violent. Yeah, that's right. They play with each other and weapons. <laughs> Delightful Desmond, you have over 13 capes and you're not wearing even one of them. <laughs> I need to steal it and make it, make it out of skin. <laughs> uh, so I'm going to go ahead and use a new Grey Knight ability and cast uh, Hunter's Mark okay. on uh, Polly and... What's the other one's name? Dolly, Dolly, no. Dolly and Priscilla. On Dolly and Priscilla. Okay. Uh, so that's going to give me an extra D6 of damage. Sweet. Cool. Uh, let me go ahead and roll an attack. Good hustle out there, son. I see you using that holy magic. Um, can we say that my uh, reroll blade was already activated? <laughs> um, no, I'm oh, sorry. Oh, God. Uh, you can also only do it once a day, so you might true. not even want it right now. Fuck, you're right. Um, okay, well, that's going to be, uh, does 11 hit? Uh, 11 does not hit. All right, hit. let me try another attack. Sweet. Uh, does 21 hit? 21 does hit. Great. All right, cool. Um, I'm going to go ahead and do a second little smite on that as well. Sweet. Cool. Let me calculate some damage for you, friend. Okay. Okay. Uh, this going to be 30 points total. Nice. Yeah. Jeez. Um, they wow. look extremely fucked up. You see- <sighs> um, They look pretty fucked up before. You slash right into um, the little girl. <laughs> do you want to do um, the older girl or the little girl? The, the older girl. The little girl. one. The mate. older girl. Okay. You <laughs> slash, <laughs> I'm not a monster. You <laughs> slash <laughs> her face like right in half, mm -hmm. and you see uh, they join together um, like one eye from Dolly and two eyes from oh. Priscilla the little girl. Curse you, symbiotic sister. <laughs> <laughs> Life made us sisters, but we chose to be best friends. Okay. As in you chose to be sewn to each other? Yeah. Okay. We love each other. I'm glad it was other. your choice, actually. Well, though, we that chose is, to be best friends. I love your love. It's I'll give you that. Uh, just worms pouring out of their mouths. Oh. Um, at the end of your turn, Bev, uh, they are going to take a legendary action and um, try to suck some blood out of Moonshine. And that is a 20 to hit. 
Yeah, that hits. Moonshine, you are going to take uh, da, 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 five piercing damage. Okay. And then 14 necrotic damage that does uh, affect your current hit points. Okay, well, I would like to say that just so you know, I currently have been blessed by um, or aided by Young Bev. So okay. my hit hey. points was up to 94 and I had bonus hit points or I had... um. Temporary hit points. Cool. Um, so uh, bites through some of your magic hit points. Ah, uh, some of these taste like magic. I like real blood yeah, more. That sounds like a good thing. No. <laughs> uh, that is Balnor's turn. Balnor's just going to uh, charge forward, and he doesn't even have a magic weapon. He's going to like try to attack the dolls that are all over JV. Ah, hold, st- hold still, bud. I'm not looking. I'm frightened. <laughs> uh, you're not looking. <laughs> Eyes up, Balnor. Uh, it's uh, nine damage. Shadowfell has not been kind to everyone. Uh, kills, kills like a handful of dolls. There you go. Uh, takes a second swing uh, on the on the dolls. You're and, battling uh, the true enemy. Successfully knocks <laughs> off one swarm of you dolls. Could just put them back on their packaging. I don't know if you need to kill them. That is Bortram's turn. Um, yeah, Bo- we could sell these shits on eBay. <laughs> yeah. Bortram uh, kicks out of uh, his uh, stun. Uh, at the end of Bortram's turn, uh, they are going to use a tentacle attack on JV again. That is 24 to hit. That's going to hit. Yes. Uh, go ahead and give me an intelligence saving throw, JV. That is not going to do it. He rolled a one and a two. Okay, you Oof. are stunned, and you take 12 psychic damage. Uh, that is Moonshine's turn. All right, I'm just going to attack these little girls. Sweet. I'm going again for the... Uh, oh, wait, no, now Only they're... one of us are little, little, but we're best <laughs> friends. Yeah, I'm going to attack these best friends. <laughs> Thank you for calling us best friends. Does a 20 hit? <laughs> Super hits us. <laughs> All right. I'm an extra D6 because I'm in fungal form, so that will be a 25, and then I spores him for 12. Jesus. Moonshine, finish these friends. <laughs> oh, okay, okay, okay. Do um, you want to be our sister, too? You know what? In this moment, I'm going to show them some kindness, and um, I'm going to say, yeah, let's have a tea party. And then I'm going to set up a little tea party and put my spores into a tea saucer (laughs) and then kill them. (laughs) So insanely convoluted. Um, I'll say, yeah, you find a like little tea set, a little teacup nearby. You spores into it. uh, You pour it over the um, mass of worms and tentacles that these monstrous sisters have become. um, And they explode apart uh, and turn into mist. I might take a cup as well. Uh, whoa, 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 whoa. Don't finish y'all theirs. <laughs> if you're having tea, I'll have a little cup. Again, yes. everyone, how about I make a new pot? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Got some chamomile. Let's keep it separate from what the worms are eating. <laughs> so we're out of combat? You're out of combat. Uh, you Ooh. guys are down. Are the dolls deanimate? Or? Uh, the dolls totally like fall off uh, JV and are just laying on the ground. I just want to say, so wait, they turned into mist? Oh, because they're not the girls. killed. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. They're back in the cellar, I guess. They're just Draculas. <laughs> yeah, so you guys are in this large living room now. Um, okay. Still candles everywhere. Um, hieroglyphics so, all over the floor. Uh, you see there's one room here that uh, was the door that you came in through, uh, which was the little girl's room. Uh, you see another door open. There looks like there's a candle in there. Uh, you see a little bed and like kind of cutesy doily stuff. It looks like maybe it's the other girl's room. You see stairs going upstairs. You see stairs going downstairs. Um, and then you've got these dolls all over the floor. Uh, okay, so y'all, we have, uh, just to tally up, we have Petunia, Ambrose, and one more, correct? That's that's right, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, I am going to pick up uh, Fancy Ferdinand. Is that one, one of the dolls? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, uh, Fanciful I mean, Ferdinand, yeah. I'm going to pick up Fancyful Ferdinand and, and see if Papa has any interest. Ram? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Papa looks over at him, um, looks uh, a little... Not for chewing. Uh, Papa kind of like sizes him up and everything, (laughs) sees that fanciful Ferdinand has like uh, uh, a little um, case of books, like a a little bag, a book bag that he carries with him, and um, Papa uh, takes it off of fanciful Ferdinand and um, wears it proudly, Oh my gosh! um, and then just nods at you like it's okay to destroy it now. All right, I destroy the rest of the doll. (laughs) Burn it. Wait, 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 save the bow tie, save the bow tie! Oh, okay, yeah, save the bow tie for uh, Papa. Papa puts on the bow tie, and wow. he has a little, uh, a, a little um, 
book bag. Hey, Deadeye, um, you're pretty good at deciphering blood runes, uh, if your house is to be any indication. Uh, did, did, can you make anything of these hieroglyphs? Sure. Uh, you know, I'm, a lot of my blood runes are kind of a lexicon of my own making, but uh, I'll, take a little, <laughs> I'll take a crack here. Yeah. Uh, you want to do like a history check? Oh, man, do I ever. Sure. That's a seven. A seven. Oh. Um, yeah, th- them some fancy words, did I? <laughs> well, I'll tell you what. This, uh, <laughs> Whatever my brother says goes. Uh huh. <laughs> you know, um, funny. You know, some of these runes here. I was in a, I was in a roadside saloon outside of a little place. <laughs> You know, far north of Galateron, a little sort of drinking hole. And uh, a yeah. fella had one of these runes on the outside of his arm, some kind of tribal marking. Anyway, we went round for round in a drinking contest, yeah. slamming down mescal. Um. Ended up summoning some kind of vulture spirit. And I rode it through the desert that night and I ended up finding a piece of myself that had been missing for a long, long time. Beverly that has should his... probably answer your question, yeah. huh, Does that answer your question, young Slam? Beverly has a notebook out and just writes down, all cricks are idiots. And it's <laughs> Uh-huh. Yeah. I, I see I just see Beverly writing and I nod approvingly that he's <laughs> that he's soaking in dead eyes wisdom. I see Bortram walks over to you, Bev, uh, puts his hand on your shoulder and goes, Looks like blood magic, like they were doing some bad stuff in here. Do you think that's how they got combined? Uh, yeah, I would I would imagine so. Hmm. Um, can we like search the rooms real quick? I guess I don't know if there's any. I think yeah. I think we want to uh, canvas this house and mm-hmm. see how you well, doing. You guys... By the way, JV, oh, that yeah. was a rough. I'm a bit hit. Yes. Do you want to take a gander at an amulet, or you want some heal? You want to heal? I might. I. Do you like I. To take uh, a... I. I uh, shamefully did not do much in that fight. So, uh, you know what? Well, why don't Why don't I help out my friend JV here? Okay. How, yeah. How Please. much How much do you need? I uh, could use thirty. Thirty. All right. You know what? Let me uh, Let me lay hands on your butt real quick. Give you a quick pat. Good hustle out there. You did great. You really represented us. The knots of penance. You really did a great job. Uh, Praise slap, be to the dust mother. <laughs> slaps you on the butt um, for Praise be. for Praise thirty. Be. You know, I do just want to say, uh, Coach Bertram, you were saying earlier that it's not okay to be attracted to the dust mother, and I think that at least in Bohemia, it's okay to be a little, you know, a little hot for your god. Oh yeah, I'd fuck Malor in a second. <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah, you know, I'd go down on her without asking anything <laughs> in return. Yes, Dust Mother's beautiful. Quite beautiful. I would rub sunscreen on Pilar. I think no question asked. <laughs> Look, we all think they're really attractive, and maybe we're all a little in love with them, okay? But all we want to do is just lay next to them and cuddle with them for a while and talk. That's all we want to do. Right, I get right. that, yeah. Right? Yeah, I want to get my mouth dirty. <laughs> You know, I mostly believe in the resolve of the mortal spirit, but if that ever took a physical anthropomorphic yeah. form, I'd fuck the shit out of it. Yeah, hey, hell we're yeah. All, we're all finding our way. <laughs> uh, I'm also going to do second wind. Okay, oh, sweet. Smart. Um, do you guys Whoa, need any... How, uh, how are you guys on hit points and stuff? Uh, I'm uh, at 76 out of 103, so I mean, okay. I'd could, I could use a touch. Let me go ahead and just give you a little uh, lay hands then there. Uh, yeah. Um, how oh, much... I've never had someone do it to me. How much do you need? Um, like 20 or 30. Uh, sweet. Actually, 20 would be great. Great. He gives you 20. Perfect. Uh, pat on the butt. Good hustle. Good hustle. Oh, thank you. His ass is so flat. <laughs> he is, feels like nothing. Feels like just slap, like it's slapping a, a board. board. But it's a board. Um, <laughs> you guys, so you guys go through the rooms on the second floor. I'm not even going to make you do an investigation check because it's not particularly interesting. You've got the little girl's room, then the older girl's room, which is decorated uh, in much the same fashion. It's very childish. And you see that they have a little door uh, between the rooms to connect them, these adjoining rooms. It's clear that they have this strange codependent relationship. Mm-hmm. I think I turn to Deadeye and I say, you know, Deadeye, as far as siblings go, I, I think we're doing it in a real healthy way. <laughs> you know, I got to say, uh, I, I don't necessarily practice self-care, but I like to think that at the very least I have an awareness of what I need to work on. Yeah. You yeah. know, and that I think as a family, we kind of move in the same direction. Yeah. There's a lot of respect. <laughs> uh, you know, I think affection can become warped in codependency absolutely yeah, absolutely absolutely yeah some of my ribs are back in the other room i'm gonna run back real quick <laughs> yeah oh, actually pawpaw got him oh yeah. 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 he is such a genius has them in his little bag yeah, his little fun. doll bag <laughs> <laughs> hands the back to you nice, you can put those back in any order i mean i lost count of where they're actually supposed to oh. go so. <laughs> well make but, sure they're facing the right way uh, Papa's not look. Papa's not le- looking to get sued for medical malpractice. Uh, he, he gets in there and he does it the right way. Um, Good man. So you guys basically see, um, yeah, there are these two little girls' rooms, um, and then there's a um, staircase upstairs, 
and then there's like a banister that wraps around and goes downstairs. Up or down, I mean, gang? I kind of think we got to go top down, right? If we are trying to, if because we don't want to get start going down into the depths and then worry that we left someone alive upstairs. Yeah, I think yep. cutting off the escape makes sense. Yeah. And Petunia was the kind of the uh, black sheep of the family, it seems. Seems oh. like the sort of person you might keep in an attic. Is she living somewhere else? Are we sure that they're all under this roof? I believe. I think they might be. But that's uh, that's I mean that's what we assumed. We okay. haven't seen them go anywhere. We don't know. I mean, right, let's act on they that might assumption. be elsewhere. But at this point, they know that they're being hunted, and I don't think it would look good to the other vampires in town if they knew that there were enemies wandering around in their own home. Kind yeah. of looks makes you look weak to the other skeeters. Yeah. Um, it's all about optics. Yeah. You know, people like these, they live their lives constantly in fear of what other people yeah. are going to think about them. It's impossible to live your authentic self. Which is pretty kind. ironic for someone that can't see themselves in the mirror. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Wow. Yeah. You know? Wow. So, you, know? <laughs> wow. <laughs> you like that one. <laughs> <laughs> Quite witty. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta take I love, time for I love a clean joke. I love a clean joke. Good job. <laughs> That's good the, the kind of joke you can play for Was your kids. Hey. What the hell is a clean joke? Oh, you mean no cuss yeah. words? Yeah. 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 Shit, fuck, cock, <laughs> oh, oh, All right, all right. Where are we going, up or down? Let's up, go up. I think up, yeah. Up, okay. Right? Are you guys all sneaking up or one at a time? Tell me how you proceed. I think we sneak up. Um, I can go in the lead. I have advantage on stealth. Mm -hmm. I got a pretty high check on stealth. Oh, yeah, you probably yeah. do. All right. Just report spores us if anything comes up. We'll, we'll wait at the bottom. Sweet. Um, you guys are waiting at the bottom of the stairs. The Crick Elves, um, go ahead and give me uh, stealth checks. That's going to be a 21. Oh. God, I got a six. Six. Oof. Okay. I got. I roll with advantage. And I got a two and a three. <laughs> oh, uh, man, that chunky mushroom body. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I don't usually stealth in fungal form. <laughs> I'm you, just playing sports left and right. You guys um, begin sneaking up the stairs. He's got that um, portobello booty. <laughs> moonshine, you step a little too heavily, and there is a very, very loud creak. You guys hear it downstairs uh, wow. on the second floor. Well. Not very stealthy. <laughs> after after a beat. Our report board just come on up, guys. I'll All right. Blow okay. our cover. Um, everybody uh, joins you guys up the stairs. Um, there is no reaction from anybody in the house or anything after you make this noise. Um, you guys are heading up. You do see a doorway at the top of the stairs. All right. Let's just All right. Three, two, one. Yeah. Should we should three, two, one, and just run in? I like that. Sweet. Let's do it. Three, two. One. Uh, you guys rush forward and kick in this door, um, and there is no one inside. Someone take uh, a piss in the corner and see if anyone responds. <laughs> Maybe they're invisible right now, but if you pee in the corner, they'll get real mad. Uh, hang on. You see this? Um, uh, you guys are in this <laughs> massive master bedroom. Um, it takes up the entirety of the third floor. Beautiful red rugs and drapes, small oak tables with golden chalices on them. Um, one big bed. Uh, with a dark oh. red blanket lined with gold. In another world, we could destroy <laughs> that thing. Uh, there is a large uh, window that overlooks the city. You can see the dim lights of torches in the distance and lanterns um, of the city, um, as well as the creeping fog on the outskirts. Uh, and there's also a small desk with a feather pen sitting in a jar of ink next to some yellow-brown parchment. This gotta be Ambrose, right? Seems like a statesman's room. Ambrose vibe. Yeah, I'd say so. This is a room of someone cultured with extremely refined taste. Um, I'm going to squeeze a little pee out of Papa onto the floor. So, yeah. <laughs> uh, so much pee comes out. Uh, instantly just pisses all over the, the oh. entire room. Smells like awful, awful. Like that that powerful, acidic cat piss smell oh. when it's not in litter. Just like the whole room stinks. It is noxious. It is hard to be in here. Dead eye visibly relaxes. <laughs> Ooh, that's better. I get nervous in rooms like this, I tell you. Papa starts napping, like as if he had that in him and needed it squeezed out. It's musky. Man. I gotta remember to squeeze this possum. <laughs> I forget. So what happens? Yeah, did anything happen? Anyone get, come out? Uh, nobody the... Nobody comes out. Nobody. Um, can I look at the desk? I want to see if there's any Sweet. leftover notes. Um, there is a note on the desk, and there is also a desk uh, drawer. I'll read the note first. Sweet. Um, the note says... Dearly beloved guests, after years of dominating powerful revenants, who would have thought the Montgomerys would have so much trouble with a ragtag crew of ruffians? Now I'm a prideful man, but I'm not a stupid one. I'd like to offer you a deal. 
Inside this desk are four candles enchanted by my own special brand of magic. Light them and it'll get you through the fog. You stay away from my crypt, I grant you permission to leave this town. Regards, Count Ambrose Montgomery. And you see um, lanterns sitting next to the desk that do not have candles in them. Um, but they are sitting next to the desk. And there are four of them. Rip it up, right? Yeah. I say we negotiate. I say uh, maybe Pawpaw's rubbing off on me, but I say we try and say, we'll leave all of your crypts ar- alone except for Scarlet's. I don't know if I trust these candles. Well, how about this? We don't know the cards we got in our hand yet. I'm going to take them candles out of that desk, and let's, if any one of y'all can detect magic or anything like that, let's see if he's operating in good faith. You got to detect magic, Bev? I don't have that stocked, but I can at least do an evil sense on him. Uh... Okay, I am going to mage hand the drawer open. Okay, Bev, uh, you use your mage hand and um, begin to open up the desk, and there is this explosion of necrotic energy, like almost like a black dragon or something is like blowing smoke out. Um, just necrotic magic fills the room. Um, everyone, go ahead and give me a dexterity saving throw as you try to jump out of the room. Um, would uh, using the Mei-Chan not give me enough space? It's a 30-foot car. Okay. 19. 19. Shout out to the two crew. Oh! That's going to be an 11. 17. You love necrotic energy, though. I love necrotic energy. I yeah. know. Can what is already killed be killed? Wait, did we get Bev's aura on that? Yeah, yeah. it's the same. Yes. Oh, it's always... Got it. Great. Uh, 21. Oh, if we got Bev's aura on that, I got a 15. Oh. Deadeye does not pass. Balnor does not pass. Uh-oh. How are you doing so here point-wise? Do can- you need a heal? I'm at 100. Oh, okay, you're good. There are no candles in there. There were no candles. It yep. was a train. Okay. Oh! Can't say I... Oh, you bitch! I was open to negotiating with you. I know you're in here somewhere. I see you're coughing. Just Lucia, know. You still got too much hospitality up in that brain. I know. Negotiating is a good tactic, but it would have left us high and dry. Oh, <laughs> Me that's... and Bortram just yeah, battling that's... the Draculas. <laughs> <laughs> You know what, JV? That is absolutely true. And I'm so sorry. You should have spoke up sooner. It's all right. It's all right. <laughs> Good to get another. Just to let you guys work through it. I uh, sometimes forget that our 62 goals are... damage to everyone who failed oh. and 31 to everybody else. Yikes. Holy shit! Am I? St- I'm not still raging anymore, am I? Uh, no. I go out of, out of yeah. 31. 31 damage to everybody who passed. Um, and the smoke clears, this black smoke clears after, um, this explosion of, um, death energy comes out of this desk, uh, and you see that the desk is empty. Um, and Balnor, okay. Balnor looks worse for wear. I rush over to Balnor. Um, is he down? Uh, Balnor is still up, okay. but he's very hurt. Oh, that was a bad desk. Here, here get, get a little of this. Yeah, amulet. here, Balnor, how, how much you need? Why don't I do, why don't we go for... Fourth level cure wound. Uh, you know what? Why don't um, you see Bortram goes? You? Uh, I am. I think f- the the rot is like normally located on like particular patches. I think it's like full spread, like Princess Mononoke style. <gasps> oh, and I'm just brother. like. <sighs> now I don't want to alarm anyone, <laughs> but I do not feel cartilage in between my vertebrae anymore. <laughs> Come so here, bring it in. <laughs> Hold on, yeah, I, I've got some model glue. Yeah, oh, if you can hit me up with that glue, brother, yep, that'd yep. be great. <laughs> I whip it out, I pull out some balsa wood. Oh, slim. I heal you for 34. Ooh, that's great. Um, Bortram does uh, a third level cure wounds on Balnor and gets him hmm. back up to like half. Thanks, coach. You know, I'm going to go ahead and heal myself. I'm sorry, y'all. I know I usually save it for you guys, but uh, self-care is what did I just taught me, so you'll practice it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Bortram is going to burn two more first-level cure wounds on um, Balnor and himself. Uh, actually, he just has to do it on himself to get himself back up to full and then he's going to do one on Balnor, and then Balnor is going to use the amulet, um, and those guys are both back to full. They look healthy again. You know, we wouldn't be the boobs if we didn't fall for booby traps. This motherfucker likes to act like he's refined. This is like some summer camp prank war shit. Yeah. Oh, does yeah. This... Oh, man, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to fill this it's, highfalutin it's, motherfucker It's low country. Later. I'll say that. Yeah. Um, I'm going to eye the four lanterns. Do I recognize the four mm. lanterns at all? 
Um, they look to be regular lanterns without candles inside them. Would I know that the lanterns are mostly that. just the candles inside them and that the casing kind of doesn't matter? For all you know, Bo, this fucking scumbag, was just totally lying to you. Right. Y'all, there. we got a bag of holding. Might as well grab those four lanterns and put them in anyway. Sure Sweet. enough. All right, let's do it. Grab the lanterns, throw them in the bag. Uh, do we see anything else in this room? And worst comes to worst, we can use them on a tablescape. Yeah, go ahead and make uh, investigate checks. Nat 20, baby. There you go. Um, Moonshine, you find like a I'm going fucked... to like detective CSI mode. <laughs> you find um, a secret compartment <gasps> um, and he's got like a treasure chest with gold and shit oh, in it. Oh, fuck yeah. Um, How much? I take it all. Yeah. Um, he's got a shitload of fucking gold. Um, I'll say... I'm rich, bitch. I'm going to college. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe elementary school first, but good goal. Uh, yeah, you find um, a chest with um, bars of platinum and gold worth about 20,000 gold. Whoa. <laughs> Holy I'll take shit. It. See, this is the exact type of wealth hoarding that hurts economies in a place yeah, like I'm not hoard, I'm only hoarding it till I get back to the material plane, then I'll spread it yeah, around. Yeah, we should use this to I'm rebuild the in- church. I'm putting it into... Dust mom. Don't Dust first of all, <laughs> do you pay taxes on your it? church? Is that tax-free? Uh, we actually um, uh, don't, but nobody pays anything to anyone here. Um, you tell me that? This guy, how this guy get a chest full of bouillon without... Oh, that's true. Well, I suppose the vampires that's do. That's soup yeah. money. That's yeah. soup on a plate money. All right, we'll give you yeah, some the only soup. restaurant in town. It's just there's a lot of dwarfenages back in Bohemia that we got to take care of with this money. Yeah, I got a... Oh, dwarfenage? I would have killed to, be, to have been raised in a dwarfenage. <laughs> You've heard of dwarfenages? Why? Oh, it sounds like a luxe life. Isn't that a bad thing for a dwarf? It, it, not quite as bad as uh, being whipped into a frenzy uh, and yeah. raged on a stone. Sorry to touch tender spots, but did you know your parents and they were in on this rage thing? Uh, oh, yes, yes. Okay, so you they, knew your parents. They were just bad. They were, oh, they bad. were wrong. They were quite bad. Yeah. Okay. They're, they're quite evil. Oh, not good yes. people, yeah. G- JB, here's a gold here's a gold bar. Oh thanks. <laughs> uh yes, and yeah, and your mother all, maybe also killed my dad. So thanks for that I as think, well. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, you've done maybe, you've done me many favors. <laughs> maybe give him two. <laughs> yeah, we'll we'll divvy it up later. Uh, I got, we don't I have that much of a use one's for plenty. a lot of gold one's, here. One's, one's good. Okay. One's good. Yeah. Just want to make sure you're getting the correct reparation. I'm just pleased figuring, with one. you know, maybe we could get a really cool weapon to go after Theala with. That's not a bad idea. And also build a couple dance halls. And we got to fix up the Stormborn, too. Yeah, that's yeah. true, If too. you went back oh. to the Crick and you chopped these up and you just gave 10 gold coins to every single Crick, all of that immediately surges back into the economy. I, I know, mean, when that's you, what I'm when saying. When you redistribute wealth to the bottom, it, it enriches, it's a nutrient to the larger economic system is all I'm I saying. mean, it's not a bad idea to just hop around to some of these poor communities and just start divvying it out. You know, you know? I, I appreciate your effort to help, but they do use brown leaves as money, so I think there's only so much, so far that would go. Why well, do you think Why do you we say use, they? He why, knows. He's from the creek. Why do you think they use brown leaves as money? Do you think that we might be a cash poor place that's been historically marginalized by other more advanced civilizations in Bohemia? I thought you just did it because it looked funny. No, <laughs> Well, we do it. Well, we do brown leaves because it looks funny, but wow. we would prefer gold. Okay, maybe we could wow. make the leaves into gold. That actually is kind of a best of both worlds. Okay, yeah, yeah. okay, right. that's what we'll do. You're right. That's I our apologize. Our project. Anything else we're missing here in the in the room, or no? You guys look around the room. Um, you find the secret compartment with um some uh, money in it. Yeah. Um, other than that, there are like gold chalices and shit that you can certainly sell. Like he's got a lot of nice stuff. <laughs> Yeah, I feel good ass. with the gold bars. I'm not. I, I'm gonna. I'm gonna go outlaw for a second here, and I think I just got a bunch of like gold forks and cups Sweet. in my pockets. Do <laughs> it up. I probably take his fancy stationery set. Oh yeah, he's mm-hmm. got a great. Uh, What's that comforter like? Made mm-hmm. of velvet. Uh yeah. Okay, we take that. Ooh, Ooh, shit's I got on that in the bag. <laughs> <laughs> and Jamie Jimmy. shits on. I'm gonna just take a dump on this pillow. Oh. Okay. <laughs> I like, hate this, this is, guy. This is from your old life, but you know what? I, I respect it. Yes. They destroyed the church. and that I, hate, was, I hate him. Yeah. I hate him so much. All right. One of the, gonna shit, on his, wow. gonna shit on his bed. One of the weirdest things about you, JV, is that you make eye contact with us while you're taking a yeah. shit. Oh, don't blink. <laughs> and you shift <laughs> cubes like a capybara. You're like yes. one of those paintings. Wherever I move in the room, you're looking right in my eyes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, that's a good... A good scene to go out on. <laughs> All right, yeah, let's uh, let's start heading downstairs and try and find Petunia. And if we don't find her, then at least we can torch some of these coffins. Sweet. Amen. Um, you guys uh, go back down to the second floor okay. um, and then begin making your way down to the first floor. Uh, you creep down the stairs. Uh, how are you guys proceeding? 
creepily. I guess maybe you should. My stealth failed us last time, so. All right. Well, I don't roll advantage, so I mean, I got a good stealth score, but I'll, I'll give it a shot. Okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll take the lead. Uh, that's only going to be a 14. Okay. So, Deadeye, you sneak down the stairs to the first floor, and you are in this um, foyer. You can see the front door. To the right of the front door, you see a room uh, with a door open, and you see a light coming in from there. It looks like there's a fireplace or something. You see, uh, like, an orange light, but it's flickering like there's fire or something. Um, to the left of the main door, uh, there is a another room there, but the door is closed. Um, there is another door next to that on the left side there. And then behind you, um, down the hall, like looking over the banister, uh, you see a dining room at the end of the hall. I'm going to pop my eye and my hand out, tuck around behind the corner and send this guy on a little scouting mission. Okay. Yeah. Go to the room with the firelight first. Mm -hmm. Sweet. This is really fun visually. Yeah. <laughs> this uh, little... <laughs> Yeah, again, like index finger and thumb holding the eyeball and the other three fingers skittering around. <laughs> Can I tripod. fashion little um, little slippers for each of his little fingers so they don't make a bony sound when they to. land we'll on the floor? You don't need to. We'll just grab them from the dolls. Yeah, you got them right <laughs> off the dolls. Um, I got a 24 stealth check Ooh. to get down to the room with firelight. Deadeye, your hand um, is able to um, sneak down the stairs here, um, waltzes in on its little fingers uh, into this room uh, that looks to be a little sitting area for guests. Uh, you see there are a few chairs in front of a fireplace. Uh, there's a small coffee table on top of a werewolf rug. Uh, it's got gray oh, hair and yeah. the head still attached, mouth opened in a roar. Uh, atop the fireplace is a large portrait of Ambrose. Um, he's got the red pupils, uh, fair complexion, and uh, pulled back silver hair that uh, is in common with all the other members of the um, Montgomery clan. He has a red tunic under a black cape uh, with a ruby uh, necklace. Uh, like some kind of red gem um, in the middle of his chest. And um, yeah, you see there's a fireplace going. Okay, no creatures here in this room? You do not see any creatures here in this room, no. Okay. Um, do you see that there are like many paintings of Ambrose and not really any of his children? Okay. Uh, okay. Does he have that red gem in all the paintings? Yes. Okay. Um I'm gonna send uh, I'm gonna send a little handy on down the on down the trail. <laughs> yeah, uh, handy. Uh, I'm gonna send a little handy Andy on down the trail. <laughs> handy <laughs> Andy. Andy. Hey, is that one of the dolls in the Bohemia Boys? Uh, um, handy Andy. Yes, but he was rejected very quickly. <laughs> it's very rare to find because he was only they only made it for one year. <laughs> uh, but I'll send him on down to the dining room. That was the uh, sexual Sweet. education doll. <laughs> Uh, you send Handy Andy um, down <laughs> to the end of the hall. Um, you see the hallway opens up into a dining room. Uh, there's a large oak table and seats uh, for each member of the Montgomery family. You see eight seats. Um, and on the table are these like cobweb covered goblets, um, but no plates. And um, you don't really see anything else. Uh, go ahead and actually give me an investigation check. Uh, I don't suppose this could be perception. No, invest it could be perception, sure. Cool. No plates. How do they eat soup? <laughs> Stripe from the vein. Ooh, that's going to be a 25 perception. Uh, you tilt Handy Andy down so that uh, the, your eye can see the ceiling, and you see a body pinned to the ceiling that looks like it was like drained of its blood. Oh, and all the blood dripped into the goblets. Who oh, is it? Yeah. Oh. Just looks to be a regular, just like a peasant okay. from town. Okay, I'm just going to stop and say that's kind of badass. I mean, like, in terms of, like, I like to know that they have some food rituals yeah. here. Once again, extremely dope aesthetic, yeah. just quite bad. Yeah, exactly. I wish, like, yeah. They know what they're about. <laughs> Interesting parties for sure. <laughs> uh, I'm going to report sports everyone and basically be like, we got uh, two closed doors down here. Dining room and the parlor are both clear, but let's, uh, I'm going to call Handy Andy back and y'all come, let's take these yeah. doors down. Yep. Yeah, I almost wonder, is there a cellar? Can we get into the tombs from here, the crypts from here? Did I? I, did I, I didn't you didn't climb. encounter any other doors besides those two doors. So the cellar's going to be through one of them two doors. Unless sure. it's even more hidden, but we should check those doors yeah, first. Yeah, let's check those doors. And I think that, you know, getting the cover of the doors open, let's just, I don't think we need to make a quiet entrance. Let's just go okay. beat feet and do yeah, it. Yeah, let's do it. Okay. And I'm still fungal form. Are right? you guys, are you guys all stealthing down the stairs now? 
Yeah. yeah. Everybody yeah. go ahead and give me stealth checks. Um, also, I want to mention that I... Can I say that I looked at Bev's amulet? Sure. Oh, yeah. Good call. Before? Cool. It's gonna yeah, be, baby. Uh, it's going to be a 16. Nat 20 on my stealth. Ooh, okay. 22 Quite from Miss Moonshine. Uh-oh. That's going to be a 7 from Beeferly. Okay. Um, uh-huh. Beeferly makes a lot of noise coming down the stairs. Once again, there's a loud creak, but then a beat of silence. You guys regain your composure, and you're all able to meet in this foyer. Um, everybody go ahead and give me perception checks. It's going to be a nat 20. A nat Ooh. 20. Jesus. Um, 19. Dead eye. Um, with that good of a perception check, even though you are kind of already a dead guy and constantly surrounded by the stench of death, um, now that your nose is down here and you have your sense of smell, you smell, the, and it hits all of you, stench of rotting bodies um, when you're in this foyer. Mm-hmm. Um, and you notice specifically, Deadeye, that um, the second room there are bodies in there. The other room doesn't smell quite as bad. Like you go up, kind of walk near the one, it seems to be wafting under the door, uh, and the other door's not as bad. Well, how we want, do we want to take the one that seems less dramatic first just to be thorough, or do we want to hit this den of evil here? I mean, what do you think, JB? Maybe this is just where they store their food. Yeah, it could be like a cellar or a pantry. Yeah, a little, a little wine closet. It could be a little man pantry. So we're going to say we're, we're not thinking of... So I'm saying, do you want to go down there or you want to go straight for the death smell? Oh, I want to go for the door that we, we don't know. Um, okay. Can I... Right. Mystery door. Door can number I, one. Mystery door. Okay. Okay, so non... non Stinky door or non-stinky door? Uh, I th- I, if Can can we see both doors? From yes. This? So I think Dead Eyes... Uh, I think I'm going to post up next to the front door with uh, Reba at the ready to fire into the room that's mystery door number one while being able to keep an eye on door number two. Great. Okay. Okay, and I will maybe... Maybe I'll, like, hold door number two closed or something like that. We're calling like them that. stinky door or non-stinky door. Okay, okay, maybe I'm putting my body against stinky door so okay. no one can pop through. Mm-hmm. And I'll pop through door number one. Okay. Non stinky. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh, JV, uh, you open the door Hello? and um, you find a small library. Uh, there is a large red velvet chair next to a small table. Uh, there is a short lit candle that appears to have been burning uh, for a bit. Uh, at the other end of the room is a bookcase, uh, and the books are all black. Mm. Just a tasteful little library. <laughs> Okay. Uh, I would like I would like to go in and investigate. Yeah. Okay. Um. What do you, What would you like to investigate? Um. Specifically. Okay. I guess black bookcase is what I'm. I'm gonna, gonna give the help action on, to Moonshine on this. Okay, okay. Moonshine, go ahead and give me a investigate check with. I'm advantage. gonna quickly wipe my ass in the chair. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, investigate. Okay, so that I'm just gonna add. That's gonna be an eight. <laughs> an eight. Um, Moonshine, you look, and all of these books look virtually identical. No surprise, because I can't read. Well, I do want to steal that werewolf rug, just kind of sidebar. Oh, smart, I know man. we're in like a really dire situation, but sometimes you got to talk about other things. Yeah, that'll look great in the rumpus room of the Stormborn. Yeah. Dead Eye didn't know that werewolf, did he? Um. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, Ken! Yeah, it was that was Ken, dude. <gasps> oh my God, they got Ken! <laughs> oh, these monsters, these bastards! <laughs> That's what it took, huh? <laughs> oh, I'm gonna kill every Ken. Listen. When you trap down in a place as shitty as Grimhawk for as long as I've been, you don't just forget someone as cool as Ken. <laughs> Ken made this town a party. Beverly Can runs over to the rug? Don't worry. <laughs> Beverly runs over to the room and sees that Ken is still wearing sunglasses. Despite <laughs> you need the sunglasses on. Take it. Oh my gosh. He had such good night vision. He said he needed to wear shades at night. Oh. How fucking <laughs> rad is that? JB right. rolls him up in a tight roll and puts it in the uh, bag of holding. <laughs> Gone but not forgotten. Winks and uh, makes it moonshine. Does anyone else want to? Uh, yeah. Uh, does anyone else want to uh, investigate this bookcase? I want to go up to the bookcase. Uh huh. I- I'm skeptical of lighting the candle, but I want to uh, activate my sword and kind of like let it scan along the the spines Sweet. of the books. Um, go ahead and either do a religion check or a investigation check. I will also give the help action. Nice. All right. First one was a five. Oh, no. Second one was a seven. Okay, total? <laughs> 11. 11. Oof. Okay, with an 11, yeah. um, you see that um, one of the books has a, um, on the spine, um, written in like thin script in gold, mm-hmm. uh, it says Montgomery. Uh, this book seems different. Okay, wait, before you do that, yeah. 
um, just because that may end up opening some sort of door. I just want to real quick uh, take the candle, mm. produce flame to light it, and put it into one of those lanterns that was left there. Mm. Okay, sweet. And at the very least, just give it to Balnor to try and help him okay. with some hey, of his thanks vision a lot. down oh, here. I like having a flashlight. Maybe let's take Stinky Door real quick before we touch this Montgomery book. Yeah, let's take a peek. I'm going to take Handy Handy yep. off again okay. and do a sleight of hand check to like open that stinky door and spring away. Uh, handy Andy runs over to the door, um, hops up cartoonishly, pulls the knob, starts to swing it open. Uh, you start to um, rush back. Uh, your eye turns and sees another very like immature room, like all very pink and doily and everything. Um, and you see a couple of figures sitting around a little table. Um, looks to be like a little tea party or something like that. But I'll say unless you actually go investigate, you can't see more than that. Right now, you're running away. That um, could be Petunia. Yeah, that could be Petunia. Should we uh, take care of this real quick? Let's we'll see if we can get the, get the, uh, the drop on them. Yeah. Okay. Drop time. And... Yes. Oh, Sweet. I hate Draculas. <laughs> yeah, well, you're about to get I, some. I, I hate Draculas. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. Very convincing. Uh-huh. They're, they're the worst. Your, your rage is very yeah. apparent. It's I'm infectious, really. Uh, I'm angry. <laughs> tell me, I hate to be such a pill. Tell me how you guys um, <laughs> enter the room. How far away is the library through the foyer to this other stinky room? Um, they're like right next to each other. So why don't I just jump in try to get that extra round y'all will be able to make it to that door in lickety split yeah, yeah. okay great sweet lead the way uh go ahead and uh, give me a stealth check uh that's gonna be 18 18 okay dead eye you sneak up to this room door is already open you peek your head around and you see bodies you see seven total sitting around a little table posed to look like they're having a tea party. Uh, They all have small silver utensils and mugs. The bodies are dressed to look like uh, different members of the Montgomery family. And on like second look, uh, you see that they are sewn together um, from different victims. Uh, Via report like... spores, I just say, y'all, this was not my tea party. Just so <laughs> everyone knows, I didn't have anything to do with this. Okay. Yeah, you see like different um, <laughs> shades of skin pigment on them. So it's like clearly from different people. Um, and their various limbs are like one arm will be shorter than the other arm and stuff like that. Um, um, and you see actual stitch marks across like their faces and their necks. Uh, the room is pastel pink and full of cute little furniture like doll furniture and stuff um and on the wall opposite the door is a painting of a beautiful young woman in a pink dress holding a little parasol and as soon as you poke your head in dead eye you hear a voice go shh uh and you look up um and you see a gaunt pale woman with sunken in eyes stringy silver hair and pigtails um and she's on all fours clinging to the ceiling like spider climb and her head is turned all all the way around um go ahead and give me a wisdom saving throw is this on being charmed is she trying to charm him it because is. you do you have any i roll with advantage against you uh, yeah as elves do so much for a surprise attack though yeah yeah well it's uh, quite a good party that's going to be on a wisdom check that's going to be a 22 you know, I did not think that Bo would be the most normal Montgomery, but here we are. God, I mean, if you're Ambrose, are you just like, man, I fucked up. I was a bad <laughs> parent. Like, yeah. several of my daughters are clinging to their youth. Mm-hmm. Like, their tiny youth, not their, like, high school. Sh- well, shitty kids. Just yeah. shitty kids. Yeah, yeah. should have spent more time on no the weekends. One, no wonder that Waylon and Scarlett feel so unashamed about making out with each other. Yeah. I mean, like, compared to the rest of the siblings, <laughs> they're miles ahead of the game. If I had to hang out with anyone now having seen this, I would hang out with Waylon and Scarlett. <laughs> it's like Bob. bar none. Yeah, yeah. Bar none. <laughs> if he had taken him to Six Flags, like, once, I think this could have been avoided. Uh, I'm thinking he maybe traveled a lot for work, yeah. you know, or something like that. Yes, uh, when, the, when the good kids are the incestuous mm-hmm. ones. <laughs> uh, Dead Eye, you do pass, so you resist. Is this the charm? She senses it. Everybody go ahead and roll initiative. Woo. Woo. Yikes. 22. 23. Oh, finally. It's going to be a 33. Ah, oh yeah. All right. You think you're Yeah. 
Beth, he's on our Tell side. Him, it's Beth. a good thing. You shouldn't feel competitive with your teammates. Tell him what you got. <laughs> I got a nine. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, maybe put that in your pipe. And uh, I guess just... And uh, don't smoke it because it's smoke bad it. for it's lungs. It's bad. This Which, is a golf initiative round, right? <laughs> Deadeye, you are first. Do I go full out here or no? We gotta save up. Gotta save up. I for think it. this ain't a bad one to go full out. You think it's not a bad one to go full I out? Think How are you immune to my charms? charms? You fucking suck. Wow. <laughs> I don't know how Look to what I can do. <laughs> Just going back and forth, upside down on the wall. <laughs> Here's Look the what thing. I can do. It's, twi- it's <laughs> twisted enough just to do this, but for you to think this is gonna make a good impression is completely Do you want baffling. to meet my family? My family doesn't oh. like me, but these ones do. Oh, this is just tragic, though. Is anyone feeling an I inch of pity? i friends. It's just, <laughs> this theme seems very similar to your right. sister's. You know what? I got... <laughs> I grafted I'm them not together. Gonna, I'm not gonna lie. I got spooked. I'm going full out. <laughs> uh, so this is gonna be... Uh, this is gonna be Reba up top. Sweet. Um, uh, we gonna make this a... Uh, we're gonna make this a violent shot. It's like you saw like an inflatable witch at Halloween and just pumped it full of lead. <laughs> uh, that's gonna be a 25 to hit. Sweet. Hits. So, you have so many dice in your hands, it looks like you're cleaning up to go home. <laughs> I should, you guys have resisted. I don't think vampires have successfully charmed you once. Well, Literally both one me had and to dead, I have resistance. One. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Well, they got hard one pretty good, so. Yeah. yeah. And he's the strongest. Say... <laughs> Mentally. Also, I've heard. <laughs> yeah, JV, I really think you'd like hard one. Yeah. I don't know how he'd feel about you, if I'm being honest. <laughs> right, right. I rub a lot of people the wrong way. <laughs> 54 damage on the first attack. Jesus. Um, I'll say you fully blow her off the ceiling. <laughs> Uh, crashes down into the um, into uh, into table what? below. Okay, okay, so yeah, 54 on that one. That's Reba. That's another radiant bullet. I think I might get a gun. <laughs> Thinking about getting a gun myself. Yeah. Luann's coming out. So that's going to be 18 plus that's 30 to hit on the next Super one. Super hits. 14 plus 6 is 20 damage on the second attack. Nice. We're going to action surge. Wow. Yeah. Uh, She's just on the ground kicking her legs up. Hey, I'll stop. <laughs> Time to party! Kill it. That's gonna be a 31 to hit. Super hits. 11 plus six is 17 damage on the next attack. Nice. And then the last attack on that action surge, I'm gonna spend my final grit point, make this a violent shot as well. 16 plus 12 is 28. Okay. Uh, we'll roll this one. This last attack this round is going to be 8, 22, 23 plus 6 is 29 points of damage on the Jesus. fourth attack. And I am going to uh, move and bonus action hide, like just blah, 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 and just backflip over the staircase <laughs> and hide in the foyer. Jesus. Um, That's uh, my go ahead brother, a, bitches. Go ahead and make a stealth check. What's up? Uh, that's going to be an 18 on a stealth check. 18. Uh, Just try to fuck with the sabins. That's the kind of energy we bring. Uh, you see, <laughs> as a legendary action, just like lightning quick, like a, she was like a turtle hanging upside down. Then she all of a sudden is on all fours like a fucking panther. Uh, legendary action uses her movement to spring out of the room, out into the foyer. Oh. Um, Damn, did I? If I could make that a Sabin uh, Christmas card, Christmas <laughs> card that we sent out this year, I would. Merry Christmas, y'all. Uh, that's that's um, Moonshine's turn. Um, I will just go in there, and I'm in a rage, and I'll go in there and attack her. She's in the foyer now. She hopped right out. So, so okay, she's so I'm press. running into the foyer and Sweet. attacking her. Does a 15 hit? It does not. All right, well, I'll still spores her for 12. <laughs> Sweet. Um, you spores her for 12. Um, she is furiously looking around for Deadeye, but does not find him, um, is going to take a bite at Moonshine. Oh. Bring it on. Um, hops up and tries to bite into her neck, um, and that is a 16 to hit, does not hit. Um, that is, da da da, JV's turn. Uh, yes, I hate Draculas, as I mentioned. <laughs> <laughs> so the sight of her makes me quite perturbed. Uh, a bit pissed. I'm going to go into a rage. Sweet. And I'm going to attack her with my X. 21. Hits. Such a toothy grin for someone so mad. 
Yes, yes, I'm quite happy to be hitting a Dracula. <laughs> <laughs> Don't get too happy, though. Stay in that rage. Yep. Stay in the funk. 22. Actually, I shouldn't have said that to you, JB. I'm sorry. You can be in the rage or not in the rage. That's your decision. Mm-hmm. Oh, thank you. Uh, and I, <laughs> uh, yeah, a, a privilege I was not afforded in my life. <laughs> I know, that's why. Uh, and I'll, I'll take another reckless attack at the Dracula. Sweet. Him being happy makes me sad. <laughs> 26. Uh, hits. 17. Nice. Um, she's starting to look pretty messed up. Um, but that is her turn. Mm. On her turn, she is going to use an ability called Hideous Grin. Uh, you see she smiles, uh, this black-toothed smile uh, with necrotic oh, energy okay. coming out. Very Don't nicely. I look beautiful? You specifically, you you tell me. Uh, points I, to I, JV. I hate the way you look. <laughs> I think you're heinous. Uh, everybody, uh, I guess, except um, I'll say Deadeye kind of jumped out of the way there to hide, um, but everybody else give me wisdom saving throws. Okay. Nat 20, baby. Nice. Uh, you are unaffected. I'm going to reroll my one. 16. Bev, you just passed. Oh. What did you get, JV? 15. You fail. Yes. Um, suddenly, JV, she looks beautiful. Uh oh. Well, I suppose she's not half bad. <laughs> uh, she looks like an old, an old friend. I didn't have many friends, but yes, you. And she's... and Balnor, Balnor just goes. Yeah, she seems. Guys, this she seems like one of the good ones. Yes, I'm with this. I'm with this old man. Oh. Yes. Shake it off, bud. We uh, think she's cute. JV? Uh, and then she's going to take a, a second attack. Um, she doesn't even need to roll. Um, you see she just goes over and bites JV, and <gasps> JV's just cool with this. Yes. JV, stop! I don't mind the Draculas. No, think about the Dusk Mother. I JV, find you're contradicting pleasant. yourself. Do you hear what you're saying? It's literally the opposite of what you've been saying the whole time. Yes, it's, I, it's, it's incongruous. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that is... 22. Do I take necrotic damage? Oh, necrotic, necrotic damage. Oh, that brings down and your then total. Did J- that bring down your total hit points? Not in not in her case. Okay. She has a special ability. JV, your strength score goes down by five. Jeez. Ooh. Oh. Uh, then that is Bortram's turn. Bortram is going to rush forward and uh, take a crack at her and he will, he hits, uh, he is going to do a third level divine smite and Not a boy, try coach. to fuck her shit Yeah, up. coach. I know she looks good now, but this is, this, this ain't right, JV. Don't, don't, don't hit her. Uh, does 40 <laughs> damage to her. She's um, extremely hurt. Um, at the end of his turn, though, um, she is going to do another bite. And uh, actually, uh, JV, you can actually redo your saving throw to resist charm because she did damage to you last time. Uh, so before she attacks, go ahead and make a wisdom saving throw. Uh, 23. Okay. Um, you pass. So um, you are kicked out of um, loving her or thinking she's an old old friend. Oh. <laughs> Well, wait a minute. <laughs> Do you hate uh, Draculas again? I hate Draculas. <laughs> uh, she is going to use this odd. legendary action, though, to try to take a bite at you, and she rolls a nat one, so that doesn't work at all. Yes. Um, but uh, after Bortram's turn, you guys see the seven fleshy people at the table begin to move are they like and zombies? stand up. Great. Um, they are big. They are flesh golems. Uh, I'm Ooh. gonna go ahead and this roll. This is making me feel bad, y'all, because I can turn people into zombies, and I do not like doing the same thing that Petunia does. Yeah, uh, but... Somebody go ahead and roll me a d6. Uh, it's gonna be a d6 plus one. That's Who's how many of them. Cold today? That's how many of them Who's stick together. Cold? I've had a couple bad. Sh- I've, I've had some shit. Okay. Go for it. That's, That's a six. A six. <laughs> You see all seven of them just complete, like, legs built perfectly. She stitched them together perfectly. These perfect seven flesh golems. Um, You made us roll for how many monsters we were going to fight, you sick fuck. And then you described how perfect they were. I'm not sick. I'm not sick. 
<laughs> oh wow, now they're gonna twisted. Flesh golem sounds like a pretty stupid thing, though, right? <laughs> Uh, yes. Wisdom. Bunch yes. of goddamn Frankenstein's and Dracula's. Yeah, can't be that smart. But yeah. maybe they'll do a dance for us. You know, just let, <laughs> let's hold out and see. <laughs> they they come out um, in tandem. They are doing a little dance. A uh, river dance like yeah, JV? they're doing a river dance like <laughs> JV. <laughs> JV, don't be tempted. Um, and I, I can't will, help it. <laughs> I will say, um, Moonshine and JV are the ones kind of getting attacked here, so they're going to concentrate their fire. So I'll say, four of them will go after Moonshine, and three of them will go after JV. Whew. All right. Um, so four of them after Moonshine taking their first attack, slam down with big fleshy fists. Two of them hit on the first attack. I got resistance, though. So 25 damage, halved. So 12 damage. Uh, they're all going to take a second attack. One crits and another hits. The one crit for 20, so take 10. The other one hits. For 14, so seven. Um, and then these other three are gonna go after our friend JV. Um, one hits on the first attack, the other two whiff. 15 damage Half. to JV, halved. Uh, they take second attacks, two of them hit. Right. 24 damage, half to 12. That is Balnor's turn. Um, Balnor screams and um, just swings at, uh, I guess, Petunia. Um, and he hits her. Did he break out of his phone? Oh, no. Sorry. No, no, he broke out. Um, right. Balnor is still... He forgot to assign the homework. Oh, no. <laughs> Balnor is still charmed by her. Um, Balnor um, just goes, guys, I she's on our side. What are we doing here? I thought she was cute, Look too. at all these oh, new it, friends. Snap out of it. Balnor, what do you see? Uh, Bev, that's your turn. All right. Uh, okay. Uh, I think I'm just going to go for Petunia. I feel like we got to break the curse. Sweet. Yeah, that's the move. Okay. That's a natural 20. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. And you know I got a smite on that. Oh. Mm. Um, 62 damage. Oh. Bev, let's <laughs> finish her. Oh, yeah. Jedi damage, baby. <laughs> uh, okay, uh, Bev goes over to the flesh golems mm -hmm. uh, and starts river dancing. <laughs> Yes. They're also river dancing. <laughs> and then I beckon for JV to join me. I instantly do. Um, so we're all river dancing, and we river dance over to where Petunia is, and then we just beat the shit out of her. <laughs> yeah, That's river great. stomper. We river stomp her to death. <laughs> river stomped. Tell oh, you. What a way to go. Uh, I was going to say that the flesh golems um, just fall down after she's dead, but I'll say they are filled with the holy light of Pelor and join you in a river dance <laughs> and stomp their old mom to death. <laughs> no, that was my family. <laughs> Taste our souls. Oh, uh, and man. you guys stomp her to death, and then these flesh golems all uh, collapse and fall apart. You see, as they hit the ground, um, just different body parts strewn apart. And it smells bad in here. Ah, shall we go to the basement? Yeah, oh, me, hell you, you, you got the move, Slim. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, shucks. <laughs> the power of God is in you, yes, my this. son. Dust oh, yeah, mother. Pelor. Praise be to the Dusk yeah. Mother. Yes. Pelor and the Dusk Mother are uh, smooching on the couch. Which I understand uh, actually, that Divine uh, Smite yeah. is a class ability. I and that gotta it is... be honest, I side with Dead Eye here. <laughs> Let's actually not talk I'm... about the Dusk Mother smooching Pelor because Pelor is actually uh, her father. So, Oh, really? Yeah. I gotta yes, study up on my genealogy. People All right, this is just getting silly, right? A little bit. <laughs> <laughs> well, the god, you know, the the gods, uh, you know. Tell they... me, actually, tell me more about the Dusk Mother. I, I'm not actually familiar with her. Um, Bortram goes on a, a long <laughs> Long storied history okay. of the Dusk Mother um, it starts telling you about how um, uh, before the gods were all on different planes, they would have dalliances with each other, and one of those was between the Raven Queen and Pelor. Uh, she is the goddess of life and death. He's the god of life and the light, and the Dusk Mother is a combination of the two: uh, the goddess of light and death, the light in the darkness, as it were. I'm full okay, on crying so, now. Okay. I think the thing that's beautiful here is actually y'all so i would say the dusk community is more impressive than the dusk mother 
herself. Sure. Oh, it's mm-hmm. a fantastic community. Yes. I wouldn't say it's more impressive than her. We couldn't do without her. I quite think the literally. cool thing is that none of us are wrong. <laughs> I, I, I am made of ashes. I'll tell you. Uh, what, let me make that clear. Some theologians have posited that deities are actually projections of the qualities that most espoused by the communities who end up revering and worshiping them. JV is pulling the uh, book. That's <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, uh, JV, go ahead and give me a dexterity saving throw. Oh dear. <laughs> 23? Uh, JV, you are able to hop back. You see that uh, the bookcase does swing around um, and oh. tries to, like, take you with it. It's got scooby I... <laughs> What? <laughs> oh, nice All right. moves. Uh, Fleet of feet. What do you say? Uh, so it just fully spun around? It fully spun around, like, as if to, like, trap somebody in there. Oh. Oh. Uh, do we get a glimpse in as if it goes... You got a glimpse in, and you saw, like, a... It looked like a hallway. But, like, a corner of a hallway. It looked like it turned. Yo, let's fuck up this bookcase. (laughs) Let's turn this wall into a door. You want to just break the escape room? Yeah, I think we should just go at this thing. I'm probably still in a little bit of a rage. I can yeah. burn the rest Sweet. of my rage I'm, on this. I'm quite upset as well. Uh, the <laughs> barbarians just start kicking in this fucking Guys, bookcase. we're uh, not going to get our refund. I hate doors that are trips. <laughs> um, and you guys you guys kick through it, um, and you see that there is a very short tunnel on the other end. Um, it uh, curves around, and it looks like it joins the next room. Like this was a trap for Petunia. To come oh, grab you. So it's not oh. taking us you to see, the You see, like, you, you open up, um, uh, you, like, push on a door on the other end, and it opens up the painting in the other room, and you're back in Petunia's room. Damn it. So okay. you've got these two rooms down here, the dining room, and that little sitting room with the fireplace. Okay. Uh, this may be a mistake to use a fourth level spell doing this, but I'm going to cast Locate Creature on Scarlet. Oh, sweet. Um, Moonshine, you get a ping below below you guys in the house okay so yeah we're going directly down let's crawl around looking for trap doors let's just let's peel the floorboards let's just turn this place upside down um i want to go back into the room uh with all the portraits of of uh, ambrose yeah okay uh great go ahead and give me um an investigate check or a person or a perception uh and i'm say no one by themselves so if i see that i'm gonna go in with great yeah i will as well Mm -hmm. uh everybody give me investigate checks or perception 27. Jesus. Do. Um, Moonshine, you are a uh, crick elf through and through. Well, you play with... I'm actually only half crick. <laughs> I don't want to talk But you grew, you grew up with the cricks. Y'all play with a lot of fire. Yeah. Moonshine, you get dangerously close to the fire <laughs> as you normally do. You're just like poking your head into the I'm fireplace like, and stuff. Just how like hot whatever. they make the fire down here, I wonder. Um, and you feel it and it's hot, but you notice that when you get close to it, it does not burn you. Okay. Ah. So I say, hey, Bev, I think your special ability is contagious, and I walk into the fire. Oh, well, don't do... Okay. Or I, like, stick my leg into the yeah. fire. You stick your leg into the fire. It is hot, but it's not doing any actual damage to you. And you, like, kick the logs apart, um, and you see that there is, like, a brick a little wall um, behind the fire. Tell me what you do. Brick wall behind the fire. I think I just go to town, hack at that wall. Um, you kick it, and the bricks give way. All right, y'all. I think we found a way. Okay. Do we... Um, uh, we have, I assume, some extra time before Scarlet and all them come back. Do we want a short rest, maybe? There's part of me that wants to just kick it here by the fire for a second. We've cleaned the house out. It seems like all the vamp... All the, seems like Catch all the our ski- breath? Yeah, it seems like all the skeeters we want to get, we yeah. got. Yes, we could relax. <laughs> Talk more about the Dust Mother if you're interested. <laughs> I would definitely be interested in that, yeah. <laughs> you know, it, it is soothing to hear y'all speak about something that you love so much. Yeah. 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 Why don't you you talk about the Dust Mother and I'll do a river dance. <laughs> no, I like that. <laughs> dance into words? JV, you are something else. <laughs> Play the foot. We are light in the darkness. See, you know, dead I still are, love the music, are. though. I do still love the music. Well, that's the thing, is they use religious artistry and iconography <laughs> to draw you in with a connection to the numinous, and then they do their goddamn con out. I am made of ash, and my God is real. You're not the only one made of ash, and I don't contest the existence of a being known as the Dusk Mother. <laughs> real as hell, mate. <laughs> Uh, cool. Um, Go ahead and t- uh, take your short rest. Yeah. Uh, everybody. Ooh, is 
Alice Trans. Yeah. yeah, bitch. Balnor, how you doing? I'll be all right after the rest. All right. Yeah, you're looking good. You want me to walk on your back a little bit? That'd be it out? wonderful. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> you step um, on his back instantly. Such loud cracks and really lo- loud dad moans. Ugh. Oh. Oh. <laughs> uh, during <laughs> during the rest, I'm gonna take Ken out of the bag of holding and put his sunglasses back on, and I go. I mean, y'all just have no idea how rad this werewolf was. <laughs> yeah. Just such a good dude and, like, solid. You know, you ever just look at a guy and you're like, this guy's on the level. You know? Absolutely. God. So, like, what would y'all get up to? You know, we would share whiskey. We would talk late into the night. And he just had a way of listening, you know. He just... Just... Yeah, I see that he's wearing blue jeans, too. Oh, man, he could rock a pair of Wranglers, let yeah, me tell look you. Yeah, the, the rips of the knees, that's so fun. Wow, and just a vest, too. Yeah. Just the jeans and a vest. <laughs> what? What's more hip than that? <laughs> just denim. <laughs> when he was in human form, he had a necklace of wolf teeth, and he had the vest and the jeans, and you're like, this guy fucking rules. Yeah. Yeah. He I'd can. like to party with him. Yeah, well. You still can. <laughs> I do a little dance. <laughs> I do kind of like, a, you know, Macaulay Culkin in Home Alone, like dancing. <laughs> so disrespectful. <laughs> <laughs> nah, Ken would have thought that shit was hilarious. <laughs> See, that was my that was my inclination. Nah, he, yeah, he had a good gallows sense of humor. <laughs> you got to around here, I guess. Yeah, you sure do. <laughs> you really, you really, I got I to gotta hand it to you, Slim. You really got the moves back there. It was uh, that river dance. My God. Oh, well, thank you. I mean, I'm... I'm, I'm, I'm trying to uh, bulk up my, my quads and my legs uh, so that I can, you know, be even more pliable. But uh, I'm working with what I got. Oh, in honor of your uh, dead friend. Not dead? What are you talking about? Your dead friend who's not coming back, right? Yes, tall me. <laughs> dead you're talking about Harbon? Harbon's coming back? Uh, right, yes, I forgot. Uh, yeah, uh, <laughs> yes. vampires go on. Yes, he's coming back. Yeah. <laughs> All right, this is a oh, little too gallows he'll, he'll for me. He'll come back, he'll come back. I thought we were all joking around. That's hilarious. Sorry. JV. Hilarious. It's really... JV. No, I think you'll come back. I'm Knock really it off, good. fellas. You seem like you're being some sort of sarcastic. I really, I'm, no, I'm very earnest. Quite genuine. I'm quite genuine. Normally when you smile, it's because you're angry, but now you're smiling genuinely and it's confusing. All right, y'all. You know what? I don't, I don't got to expect your goals to line up with mine, so that's fine. If y'all want to doubt it, then go ahead and doubt it. I don't care. Yeah. It's so interesting Water how people... Water off my back. You know, Moonshine, I find it rather interesting that people that claim to be men of faith would have so little faith in something that defies the imagination. Oh, how does you know, that, that was, feel? That was my fault. That's why I'm not a penance. I need feel? to repent right now. <laughs> does mother forgive me for doubting? Just screaming throughout the house. It's almost <laughs> like dogma exists in opposition to an understanding of the wonderful mysteries of creation. JV, we apologize. <laughs> we fully apologize and repent. I prostrate repent. myself. Let's hit ourselves. <laughs> I hit myself. Oh, I can always go for a good prostration. <laughs> Yeah, let's let's get a little cat cow going real quick. Uh, sweet. Okay, so, cool. um, you guys prostrate yourselves and um, <laughs> spank yourselves, um, and you guys are in front of this little false wall. Hey, everybody! It's Emily here to talk to you about aura frames. Mother's Day is coming up, and some of us are looking for a way to shower the maternal figures in our life with love. Well. Look no further. Aura frames are the digital picture frames that bring all your photos and videos together in one gorgeous, high-resolution display. They're super easy to set up. They save you from the struggle of printing and framing your favorite photos, but most importantly, they help you stay connected with family that live far away. That's because you can kind of preload a bunch of pictures onto the frame, but you also get to keep adding pictures and you can invite the rest of your family to add pictures. The gifts you make mean the most. So this year, turn your family's past into the perfect Mother's Day present with a connected frame from Aura. Right now, Aura has a great deal for Mother's Day. Listeners can visit AuraFrames.com slash Papa to get up to $30 off on their best-selling frames. That's A-U-R-A frames.com slash P-A-W-P-A-W. Plus, listeners can get free shipping with code P-A-W-P-A-W at checkout. This deal ends on Mother's Day, May 14th, so don't wait. Terms and conditions apply. Goodbye, sweeties. Hey there, Nadpoles. This episode is brought to you by Rocket Money. Do you know how much your subscriptions really cost, folks? Well, most Americans think they spend around $80 a month on subscriptions, but the actual total is closer to around 200. Holy hell. If you don't know exactly how much you're spending every month, 
then you need Rocket Money. Rocket Money is a personal finance app that finds and cancels your unwanted subscriptions, monitors your spending, and helps you lower your bills all in one place. Over 80% of people have subscriptions that they forgot about, and chances are you're one of them. Like that Stars app just to watch that one show or that free gaming trial you never actually used. Well, Rocket Money will quickly and easily find your subscriptions for you. And for any you don't want to pay for anymore, just hit cancel and Rocket Money will cancel it for you. It's that easy. Rocket Money also helps you manage all your finances in one place and automatically categorizes your expenses so you can easily track your budget in real time and also get alerted if anything looks a little funky. Over 3 million people have used Rocket Money, saving the average person up to $720 a year. Wow. So stop throwing your money away, cancel unwanted subscriptions, and manage your expenses the easy way by going to Rocket rocketmoney.com slash pawpaw that is rocketmoney.com slash pawpaw one more time for you rocketmoney.com slash pawpaw thank you all right let's um, do it. and it's it's so it, it is a fireplace so the wall is short um so it looks like it, it opens up into like a tunnel we can crawl through the small false wall you can crawl through the fall fo- small false wall oh. let's crawl through the small false wall <laughs> great what gall <laughs> <laughs> Y'all. <laughs> uh, you guys um, begin crawling in there. It is extremely dark. And can we say that my locate creature for Scarlet is sort of like some, mu- it's almost like the network of mushrooms <gasps> is like, is like kind of like bioluminescently glowing to like lead me to her. That sounds pretty fucking dope. Yeah. Okay, cool. So um, they're, they're like sprouting along the path? Yeah, they almost Whoa. like, as I like go, they sort of like flurry, it like, you know, it, it like gradient bioluminesces. Uh, I'm going to look down at my rotting chest and see some of the like bioluminescent mushrooms growing in the rot of my chest and driving the maggots out. Oh, that feels so much better. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. You know, you just got to you got to look out for your ecosystem. <laughs> yeah. Your gut bacteria. It's very different for <laughs> them for us, but gut flora is very important even for the undead. Here's the thing. You got gut flora. I got gut fauna. Yeah, that's true. Ain't that right? <laughs> Bal- Balnor laughs way too loud. <laughs> <laughs> this guy's hilarious. I love it. Keep it a PG, right? Yeah. It's another good joke. <laughs> Not offensive. That's nice. <laughs> yeah, that's another what we call that yeah. clean joke. Please guys that one. That was a clean joke. Well, let me nice tell you, the Knights of Penton, the Knights of Penton's absolutely ruined the only comedy club we had in town. <laughs> All these comics gotta work clean. They any blue material and they get chopped to ribbons by we these didn't ribbons. Really laugh. It was more of a thumbs up or yeah. thumbs down based on the joke's cleanliness. <laughs> call them clean, well, like clean yucks. <laughs> clean yucks, good hustle. <laughs> <laughs> A good clean can't yuck. lose. Can't laugh. <laughs> clean clean yucks. Hustle. Good hustle. Clean can't yucks. laugh. Good hustle. Can't lose. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we're crawling. Yeah. So you guys crawl. Um, and uh, you guys uh, see a little bit of light at the end of the tunnel. Um, you see another little wall of bricks. Um, but you see uh, light poking through it. Like the little spaces between the bricks. You can see torch light on the other side. And where my where is you guys my like get a br- creature sense? Uh, oh, still no. below you. Just still below. Okay. Yeah. Like you're getting closer. Hmm. All right. Um. Yeah. You want to send your uh, your little eyeball to spy through that hole? Sweet. Um. Nice. You um push out a little brick, uh, Jenga style, hmm. uh, and handy Andy uh, with dead eyes <laughs> eye goes through. <laughs> Um, Deadeye, um, Handy Andy finds himself on a uh, staircase. Uh, upstairs uh, looks to have been collapsed. You see like brick and stone and everything, just this like natural wall of debris. Um, but um, there are torches along the wall heading down. Uh, and it wraps around. So you'd like to send them down? Mm-hmm. Sweet. Go ahead and give me a stealth check. Uh, that's going to be a uh, uh, 17. Okay. Handy Andy, um, you sneak down into the Montgomery crypts. Yeah, uh, you see you're in a wide hall, vaulted ceilings. The stonework on the floor and the walls has this pale blue color. It's all dusty and dirty. You can only see a little bit. There is torchlight. Um, and you see statues of the Montgomery family. 
uh, you see that there are three on one side, three on the other. You see that the ones of uh, Dolly and Priscilla are connected, not in like the skin graft way, in a like sanitized version of them. And you even mm -hmm. see like the one of Bo. He looks like very regal and like put together, even though you know he's a piece of shit in real life. <laughs> and uh, Deadeye, as Handy Andy sneaks down there, uh, a giant Hulk-sized hand fucking grabs oh. your hand and your eyeball and just busts your fucking eye and hand. Oh. And everything goes black. Uh, I think Deadeye's passed out. I think oh. Dead, you guys just see, you guys, Deadeye doesn't even tell you what's going on. You guys just see Deadeye pass out. Can I, can, I cure, can I cure him? Sure. Uh, yeah, give him a cure wounds. Uh, go ahead and cast cure wounds on him. All right, that's 10, 10 hit points. Uh, Deadeye, uh, you you stir and you come back up. Um, eye is missing. You have no contact with it. Uh, you don't feel your hand anymore. Oh, that's so bad, y'all. What's oh, wrong? I gave up everything for that eye. Uh, there's something down there. Ambrose is down there or something else. What happened? It's a crypt with the Montgomerys and something came down and grabbed Handy Andy and destroyed him. Destroyed Andy, my Andy. Destroyed my hand and my eye. It's destroyed? We can't get it back? I, uh, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, Let's ask him. Hey. Let's get down there and ask some questions. I think we should get down there and, and, you saw the tombs though, right? The little. Yeah, I saw them. All right, well, let's try and go down there and. There's yeah. a monster down there waiting for us. Yeah, I know. I assumed as much. All right. Okay, I I'm very sorry for what happened, Dead. Are you okay? Do you? I guess I'm trying to understand. Do you need us to pause, or you want to go down there? This is so bad. Yeah, that, and, I'm getting that sense. And um, you know, but uh, there's no use crying over spilled milk. And I suggest we just head on down there. Um, I am a little shocked uh, because destroying my eye and my hand maybe should unmake me from existence, but it hasn't. So that's exciting. What was oh, the significance Lord. of this eye in hand? Well, Dead Eye is a name I got because of the eye. I wasn't called Dead Eye when I was born. Meemaw didn't name you Dead Eye. It's a cool name. It sounds right like nine. a Meemaw name. Oh, it's yeah, no, no, that's an assumed name. I think you're gonna be fine. Look that look at that eye. That's yeah. a good looking eye, yeah, dude. Yeah, the one you've got left. Thanks, partner. It's nice and grotesque. Hey, I appreciate it. Well, listen, um, uh, I'm going to be a, a little less useful in this uh, upcoming uh, fracas that we're headed towards. But okay. you know what? I'm not destroyed, so it feels like maybe I've just been... It's possible that my eye and hand are down there, uh, maybe broken and squished, mm. but maybe if I get the goo back in the socket and a little bit of healing happens, who knows? Well, you know. Yeah, if we can find it, I'm sure we can do a greater restoration on okay, it. Okay, well, I love you, brother, and we're, I'm looking out for you. I'm trying to finish the job. I'm also trying to look out for you. You know, you say the word if it's too much, and we got to reconfigure. Can, hey. you, can you stand? Yeah. Oh, I can stand just fine. All do right. you need Do you need to borrow Papa during this so that he can help <laughs> reload your bullets? I could just put them in your rib cage. Rear, <laughs> rear. Papa nods. <laughs> All right, Papa. We got to get to work. <laughs> he'll be your He'll be your second hand. Yeah. Uh, I am going to take Papa, <laughs> and I'm gonna whip some twine out from my coat <laughs> and tie him to the stump of oh my, my other God. of my other can arm. I can I get in real close to my baby's face and say, Papa, I have kept you out of battle for long enough. Rear. I know I'm, you got the brains, but now it's time to prove you got the brawn. Ferocious beast, these things. Rear. <laughs> One tore my throat out. I know, I know. Papa nods solemnly. <laughs> Um, and Brandon, I said, we had talked before that if you um, didn't have your eye or your hand, you'd have disadvantage. But with Papa, you'll just be a base, um, regular old attack. Cool. Great. <laughs> Done. Papa's is, first battle. This is some warrior. Weirdest ratatouille situation <laughs> I've ever seen. All right, y'all, let's do this. All right. All right, Papa. Yeah. I want to give him a little war paint, too. Oh. I'm nervous for him. Absolutely. Uh, he's got some vampire blood on him now. 
Um, yeah. I'm going to go ahead and activate my uh, sword as we descend. Sweet, it glows. Oh, I'll go into uh, my second fungal fungal form. Nice. Mm-hmm. Um, Moonshine goes into fungal form. Um, and you guys see um, Bortram's sword is going to glow white, and he is going to cast Aura of Life. Uh, it's going to give everybody uh, resistance to necrotic damage, and you can't have your hit point total um, moved down. Um, it's, con- it's a concentration uh, spell, but it'll help yes. you. It'll help you for a little bit. Yes. Ooh. Quite All right. Uh, let's uh, you know, use a combination of um, religion, but also ourselves yeah. and I human it, ingenuity. Y'all. Isn't it beautiful? All yeah. right. Mostly the dust mother, but yes. But mostly really, Mostly God. <laughs> Mostly God, Almost but we entirely deserve, the dust mother, but, but yes. some of us, some of the others. JV's got it right. Yes. I think it's time we include ourselves in the pantheon. Just a little bit. Wow, but yes. that's cute. <laughs> All right, Papa. When I yell, pull, you pull. Ram. <gasps> so you're going to be reloading, and he's going to be firing the gun. <laughs> uh, uh, I'm going to take Reba off my back, and put, so my left <laughs> hand is on the gun stock, and Pawpaw's on the trigger. <laughs> I'm so proud, my baby. Pawpaw going into hammer. battle for the first time. Fucking amazing. So good. <laughs> um, so are you guys all just like going in there, guns a blazing? Yeah. Yes. I think Sweet. we got no choice. Um, Moonshine symbiotic entities. Um, Bortrim, um s- uh, sword glows white. Papa and Deadeye ready, Reba. Uh, and uh, are you in a rage, JV? I'm going to go into an angry river dance. <laughs> the angriest I've ever danced. The fiercest my legs have ever moved. His feet are a blur. <laughs> uh, angrily um, river dance uh, down the stairs into this crypt. <laughs> Um, <laughs> you guys get down there. It's a full-on ocean dance. Uh, yes. You guys get down to the bottom, uh, and you see uh, torches lighting this room, pale blue stone, statues of the um, different um, members of the Montgomery family. Um, further down, it looks a little bit darker. It's not lit by torches. Uh, you do not see one of um, Ambrose yet. Um, but you can assume it might be down the end of the hall. You can't see all the way down there yet. Um, you just see three on one side, three on the other. Um, and as you guys enter the room, you hear a roar as this giant lumbering vampiric beast, uh, did I, you assume this is Wyatt Montgomery, um, like the Incredible Hulk, he's wearing like shredded human clothes. He's got like green pants and suspenders and a white button up with sleeves rolled up and tears where his oh. massive muscles bulge. Uh, he's got the trademark Mar- Montgomery silver hair, but it's short and matted. Uh, and his face is far more bestial um, than the other vampires. He's got a thick, severe brow and a face like an ape with fangs. And he on all fours charges towards you guys and you guys see see swarms of bats uh, skitter out um, from the crypts. Uh, everyone, go ahead and roll initiative. Oh, that's a 20. Yes. 19. Just a little 20. A nat 20? Yep. Good for you. Uh, 21. 23. Okay. JV, you go first with a 23. Uh, okay. Uh, JV is going to excuse me, everybody, but ah! yeah. Oh, I'm quite mad. Because I hate Draculas! That's right, son. This is the maddest you've ever seen, JV. Uh, I'm this is uh, I'm channeling my zealous presence. Whoa. Oh. Uh, which is going to inspire everybody. Uh, and you now have advantage on attack rolls and uh, saving throws until Holy my sh- next turn. Whoa! Oh. Oh. That's fucking oh. good. Wow. How many people can you do that to? I can do it up to 10. Whoa! That's great. Oh, yeah. Good so for you. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Sweet. Thank you. Um, do you get to do an attack too, or is that uh, just. Yes, it's as a bonus action. Excellent. So okay. I have to make my two, yeah. two attacks. Yeah. Go ahead. Great. Uh, so I'm, moving, I'm going to attack, and it's going to be reckless. Yeah. 23. Hits. 19. Okay, takes 19 damage. Net 20. Woo! Very, very good. That's great. <laughs> 31. Freaking JV runs forward, um, inspires all of you with how much he loves the Lord. Um, and I love the dust and I hate Dracula. Meets fucking Wyatt, this giant beast vampire, uh, head to head, and starts slashing at him. Um, JV, we're going to have to start calling you Varsity. <laughs> 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 
Hello. Uh, but nice clean pun. I like that. <laughs> Just another clean joke for y'all. At the yeah. end of your turn, um, Wyatt is going to take a legendary action and is going to swing a great axe. Uh, pulls this giant axe from his side, uh, swings down on JV, axe against axe. That is an 18 to hit. It does. 19 slashing damage. Halved. Halved, so that's nine. Uh, and then necrotic damage, which is also gonna be halved because of Bortram's thing. Ooh. 17 necrotic damage. That's um, half. And then so that's half halved. Half. Okay. So eight. Um, that is Deadeye's turn. This is really just indicative of how all of these fights have gone, um, which is that uh, there are two people going ahead of Bev who rolled a nat 20. <laughs> <laughs> that's why my vampires haven't done shit. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh, Spend a grit point. Make this a violent shot. Well, you also you also have an advantage on your attack rolls because of uh, the... Mm, hell yeah. yes, my zealousness. Love it. Honestly, JV, for the first time, maybe, I'm into it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Reba misfires. <gasps> oh. What? With advantage, I rolled a nat one and a nat five. Uh, uh, and because it was a violent shot, the misfire score goes from two to three. So I go, boom, ball, ball. Papa <laughs> bites it way too hard, and the whole trigger just comes off. <laughs> oh, oh, damn it. All right, forget it. <laughs> <laughs> Good effort. Uh, and uh, I'll go, time to redeem yourself, Papa. <laughs> and I'm going to move Papa down to grab Luann off my head. Uh, scrambles down, grabs it, brings it back. <laughs> Super <Just> apologetic. Full <laughs> level, like like presenting the side of my body, stiff arm with Papa at the end, holding up to Luann. <laughs> oh! if, this were, if this were a legal battle, Papa would have <laughs> He's scrambled mine. down the end of your arm, goes over to the trigger, and pulls it with his teeth. Yeah. Uh, Mom, Papa. Technically, okay. you're not murdering anyone. Uh, okay, this is going to be... We're going to spend another grit point for another uh, another violent... Nat 20. Regain oh, a grit what? point. Oh, baby! <laughs> That's going to be a regain of a grit Papa, point. Papa, like, gently moves your... Papa gets, like, up to the um, crosshairs and, like, gently moves your <laughs> hand, uh, and then together you fire. <laughs> <laughs> Incredible. Okay. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> so many dice. 47 damage on the first hit. Jesus. Uh, and let's go ahead and call that an action surge. And we'll spend another grip point to make this one a violent shot as well. 17 plus 12 is 29. Super hits. You and Papa are just, uh, Papa just didn't like Reba, I think. He feels much more comfortable with his big gun. Or Luann's the, Lou the magical side piece. Oh, That's got the six it. shooter. Yeah. Um, I, he's got to be like holding it with his with his fore and hind paws. Yeah. Like, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Incredible. Okay. Just like mounting this gun. <laughs> 28 damage on the next attack. Nice. Woo. And we're going to do the last grit point here for another violent shot. Wow. Oh, come on. Just boom, 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 boom. Papa just like <laughs> furiously scrambling back and forth. Just, <laughs> just spitting up milk. Where to get milk? <laughs> I, I give him little milk pouches. Uh, 25. That hits. Like a Canadian milk pouch. <laughs> Yeah, like one of those ones that they try to do in the States and it didn't work <laughs> out. It's too sloppy. 20. Yeah, we're 26 damage on the last attack. Nice. Uh, you light this dude up. He's much burlier than the other vampires, but you see he is like staggering back um, as he's fighting against uh, JV. Uh, I'm going to do bonus action stealth to hide behind one of the sarcophagi. That's a 28 stealth check. Nice. Uh, Bev, that's your turn. Okay, I'll With take your turn. With your 20, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Here we go. I'm uh, going just to... rushing up and swinging at this dude. Yeah, uh, I think I'm just going to follow suit with everyone else. Roll and just with like, advantage. Roll with advantage oh, and yeah. just try and get in this mix. That's a nat twenty. Oh my god! <laughs> this is un fucking. Oh, what the hell? Sometimes uh, I think your dice are weighted, Bev. I yeah, do... you've had insane. Rolls These have been good. Well, I had some dice. shitty rolls earlier true, in the true, session. True. I think. Listen, just let me have this. All okay. right, all right. Yeah, you're due. We honestly. can test the dice after this episode. You guys are due. Cool, yeah, uh, just let me have this, please, Murph. What I'm going to do here is a second level Divine Smite. 
56 damage total on my first attack. Jesus. Yikes. Explosion of radiant energy. <laughs> um, lights up the entire crypt. Uh, you see at the other end of the hall is a statue of um, Ambrose sitting atop a throne. I point at him. I call my shot. <laughs> <laughs> Next. Uh, and then I guess I'll take another attack. Why the heck not? Sweet. Uh, that's going to be a 20 to hit. Not nat. Uh, super but hits. Advantage. Sweet. Advantage. Roll oh, again. Right. See if you crit again. Mm. No. I'm going to go with the first one. Okay. Um, cool. All right. So let me just go ahead and do a normal attack. That's going to be uh, just 12 extra damage. Starting to look a little messed up. All right. Um, Wyatt is going to use a legendary action to do a bite on our friend JV here. I am always going for JV. That's a nat 20 for Wyatt. Everybody's hey. critting. Everyone <laughs> is critting. Critting it in the is, crypt. It is yeah. honestly about time that I crit because mm. I'm getting whomped. I'm getting my bell rung. And this is not okay. And it's a big gothic bell too. 32... Oh. Necrotic damage. So um, turn down to 16. Um, but that... Oh, and your hit points can't be uh, permanently lowered. So just 16 damage. Okay. Uh, and then that is actually his turn. So now he's going to take his turn. That was just a bite. Um, so now he's going to take a great axe attack. Um, and that's 17 a hit on you, JV. 17 is my AC. Does that hit? That then? does hit. 21 regular damage, slashing damage, um, halved to 10. Nine necrotic damage, halved to four. Um, that's the first axe attack, takes a second axe attack and hits. 17 slashing damage, halved to eight. 12 necrotic damage, halved to six. Moonshine, that is your turn. Okay, I want to make a beeline for Scarlet's coffin. I would like to run to Scarlet's coffin, crack it open a touch, but with my body weight on it, and then cast a second level create water and put 20 gallons of water inside her coffin. Holy <laughs> shit. Um, Moonshine, you crack open. Um, but I'm still holding it close with my body. Yeah, Moonshine, you find the statue of Scarlet. Um, next to it uh, is a coffin uh, in between these little like partitions. Um, and you find a coffin, you run over to it, you open it. Um, you see inside uh, Scarlet is regenerating. She looks like extremely weak and looks. she looks like skeletally thin with just like a thin layer of skin atop her. As soon as you open up the casket, I she give her, opens her eyes. I give go, her a quick, hey, bitch, then fill her up <laughs> with water. <laughs> Fill the entire casket with water. And, yeah. you just, mm -hmm. uh, and then you just are closing the coffin. I'm keeping it closed. I'm keeping it like I'm keeping my body weight on it. And you close and you close it up. Hell yeah. Good turn. Um, at the end of Moonshine's turn, Wyatt is going to take a legendary action and swing his great axe at JV. I feel like I'm being picked on. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's 20 to hit. Yes. 21 slashing damage. Halved to 10, 12 necrotic damage, half to six. Yes. Okay. Um, then, after that, you guys see eight swarms of bats mm -hmm. descend on Bortram. They spin around him um, and begin attacking him furiously. Uh, he's holding up this sword of pure light. One of them hits on the first attack. Three of them hit on the second attack. 20 damage total to our friend um, Bortram. Bortram needs to succeed on a constitution saving throw. Rolls a nat six, um, fails. You guys no longer have your aura of life. Um, you see his um, blade dims a little bit. You guys see in the swarm of bats um, around uh, Bortram, suddenly whoosh, one turns into an elder vampire, Ambrose Montgomery, and sinks his teeth into Bortram. Coach! Oh, That's no. my friend! Remember, wait, oh. what, did, what did we say? What was our clear eyes for hearts? Can't I can't remember it. Um, clean, clean jokes. Clean jokes. <laughs> clean jokes. Full hearts can't laugh. 
Was it full, oh, clean, clean yucks. Clean yucks. Full, full, full hustle. Full hustle. Full hustle. <laughs> clean, yeah, clean yucks. Good hustle. Can't laugh. Yeah. <laughs> clean yucks. Good hustle. You gotta hustle laugh. more than that. <laughs> no amount of hustle can stop a vampire. <laughs> uh, so he takes right off the bat. Bat. Right off the bat. What? Um, Another fifth, good joke. 15, <laughs> what, clean? 15 piercing clean, damage. Yeah. And then takes 20 necrotic damage from the bites. Uh, and he, uh, Ambrose pulls back. I hate the way y'all taste, but I'm going to love ashing you. Uh, and Bortram is starting to look a little bit fucked up. Uh, he's going to take a claw attack. You see Ambrose has these big vampire claws. Hits on the first claw attack. 15 damage, uh, then takes a one last claw attack and does 17 damage. Um, Bortram is starting to get pretty hurt. He's a pretty hardy guy, though. Uh Um, At the end of Ambrose's turn, Wyatt is going to take another axe swing at JV. Right? Why not? Nat 20. <laughs> oh. Yes. oh, quit picking on JV. It's like I'm the only one here. <laughs> well, I mean, you do just go back to an urn. Not against the not, not against, against the Montgomery's. Them. Oh, wait, I thought it. Oh, nope. nope, nope, nope. Okay, I thought it was just the bullets, but no. 21 slashing damage, halved, halved. to 10. Little barbarian. And then um, this necrotic damage is just going to fully go through. 16 necrotic damage. All right. Still alive? Still alive? Hell oh, yeah. Oh, that's great. Stays yeah, up. Yeah, Varsity, go and get um, it. That is Balnor's turn. Balnor um, is uh, going to try to help Bortram here and is going to um, start swinging at the bats around him. Balnor doesn't have a magic weapon. It's not even It's not even worth Balnor doing like two damage to the dude. Balnor fucking crits. Whack those bats. <laughs> Whacking the bats. You never know which Whack one's going to be a vampire. It's very true. <laughs> you never know. We forget. Um, Balnor uh, does 22 damage, fully kills one of the swarms of bats. Nice. Um, awesome. Takes another swing um, and hits um, and halves another one of the swarms. Then the herd, buddy. At the end of Balnor's turn, Ambrose is going to take a legendary action and bite into Bortram. Natural 20. Hmm. Oh, that is 47 damage oh. on the bite. Um, you guys see uh, Ambrose has just like latched on to Bortram's back. Bortram is swinging his light filled uh, long sword at the bats around him, uh, completely frazzled. Balnor's trying to get him off of him. Um, and uh, this elder vampire bites into Bortram. Uh, you see Bortram kind of uh, staggers forward, um, looks up at you guys, and he goes, protect Grimhawk, and then turns to ash Bortram. and is gone. Just, you see, um, when you guys saw the other guys, like, uh, turn to ash, you saw, like, kind of like a mist fly away. He yeah. is just gone. He crumbles. You've done a bad thing to a good man. And you see his sword um, goes from like this bright white to just a regular long sword and ksh, 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 clashes against the ground. Uh, that is. Go to your award. JV's turn. Right. <laughs> oh. I'm very upset. You killed my friend. <laughs> I didn't have many of them. Oh, I'll I'll look at the lad's amulet. Okay. Please take a gander. <laughs> very nice. It's get a an, pretty amulet. Get an amigander. Drink an amiganzit. Um, I'm going to keep on swinging at the big boy, Beef Daddy. Do it up. Mm. Beef Son. That's so frustrating. It was on a 19, and it rolled down my paper on two. Oh. two. Um, uh. 15. Does not hit. All right. and You're probably swinging pretty emotionally. I will take my second attack. 24. Hits. 20. Wyatt is looking pretty, pretty, pretty hurt. There's yeah, Varsity, go do. and get him. <laughs> I'm very sad. We're going to get you a jacket. I'm less this angry and more depressed. Your, this is a good use of your emotions. I'm quite, I feel ill. That's okay. <laughs> hey, Sick to my stomach. JV, no yes. more rage as a shield. Yes. Turn it into a spear. I will become a weapon again. <laughs> just for this, just this once. Just one time. At the end of JV's turn, 
Uh, I think Wyatt is out of legendary actions, but Ambrose is not. Ambrose is going to, um, everybody just roll me a luck check to see who oh. he runs up to. I got three. Uh, I guess um, you're a dead eye's hidden, so not a dead eye. Okay. I've rolled two natural 20s this episode, but also like three natural ones. I'm okay. gonna re-roll that, so. I got a three. That was a nat 20. There you nat go. 20. Um, well, Bev, this w- this wasn't like a half link thing. This was just um, oh. I I don't want Ambrose to like uh you know pick on somebody for no reason. But you rolled the one, so well, Ambrose is going to go after you. He's going to pick on me. Uh, so Ambrose, um, I'll say you probably uh look to be the holiest besides Bortram. So oh. after taking out Bortram, uh, is going to charge forward and take a legendary action, swipe at you with his claws, and he does hit. Good, I wanted you close. Oh, good. You want me to turn you, boy? Uh, that is 23 damage. Oh, something's going to turn all right. Oh, is that right? And then that is Deadeye's turn. So you've got Wyatt looking pretty messed up. Um, you've got Bortram fucking gone. Um, JV's pretty messed up. And I'm uh, actually, I'm, JV's Ambr- better. JV's better. Yeah. Okay. I looked at the amulet. I'm going to keep trained on Wyatt. And we're going to yep. focus fire. We're going to pick them off one by one. Slim the herd. Dope. Time to get to work. Um, yeah. Go on, Popo. Uh, this is full. I think Deadeye is full, like, saloon fighting. He, like, leaps from one sarcophagus horizontal in the air. Bam, 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 bam. Just Popo. Popo has turned head. the wimple into a little cowboy hat. <laughs> <laughs> if I don't see fan art of Popo lashed to Deadeye's bony stump with them both wearing cowboy hats. <laughs> what was I'm the point of any of this? What was the point of any of this? Uh, that's going to be a th- 30. I'm attacking from hidden hits. This is going to be 16 damage to Wyatt. Okay. I'd like to take a bonus action to hide again this turn in between attacks, if that's okay. I think you can split up bonus actions between attacks. I'm not sure. You know what? Why don't you do an acrobatics check to see like how fast you how fast you roll in? Cool. Uh, 20. Dirty 20. Yeah, you're good. Oh, yeah. All right, we're going to make a stealth check here. Uh, that's going to be a 24 stealth check. Cool. You hide. Um, and My son. Uh, this will be, all right. So I'm going to roll with advantage on this attack as well. Sweet. 19 plus 12 is 31. Super hits. So this is going to be <laughs> seven damage. Wow. Oh, a he... polite applause. <laughs> <laughs> Both clap. Just a little clap. I mean, who's paying attention to the damage? You were flying through the air with a possum tied to your it's arm. True. You look great. <laughs> Accurate. <laughs> Uh, at the end of a Dead Eye's turn, uh, Ambrose takes another claw attack on Bev and hits. Ugh. 14 damage. Okay. Um, and that is your turn, Bev. Wonderful. So you've got Wyatt looking pretty messed up. Um, and then you've got uh, Ambrose on you. And then you've got all these bats. Okay, so I'm going to just go ahead and like prepare a branding smite. Sweet. Um, he's up close on me. Uh-huh. Uh, I'm just going to... Slash at him, uh, and then I want Ambrose ask, or Wyatt. I'm gonna slash at Ambrose. Sweet. Ambrose is like yeah. Ambrose, like Fuck just up, slash Ambrose. me. I'm like yeah. right up in the mix with him. I'm gonna take advantage of that fact. Nice. Uh, does a 21 hit? Super hits. Woo! All right. Yeah. Third level smite. Yeah. Oh my yes, god, motherfucker! Uh, I think. Wait. Oh, branding. Uh, smash. I don't like that very much. Okay, branding smite. I actually. I'm going to, let me flop that. I'm going to do the Branding Smite at third level. Okay. So that's going to be um, 3d6 radiant damage in addition to my normal damage. And then I'm going to tack on a Divine Smite at first level onto that. My God. Okay. Brennan is rubbing off <laughs> on people. I can see Brennan masturbating over here. Oh, yeah. God, it's so good. It's just so good to do the damage. Oh, it's fun to know the game. Hey, Brian, we can have dinners too. <laughs> 32. Yeah, All fuck right. up, bitch. So on my first attack, uh, I do 32 damage. My blade glows, and uh, for the first time, runes appear on it. Uh, and before I strike, I like swing and begin to strike. I flip the blade sideways, and I spank his ass. <laughs> nice. <laughs> and I leave my Beverly brand on it, <laughs> which is like a cool little logo that I designed in math class. Uh, he is extremely injured by your Bev logo, <laughs> um, which looks like the the um, that cool S except a B. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. He staggers back. He is very composed, um, but did not like that radiant damage one bit. I don't give I him did not a, like that one bit. I don't give him a chance to recover his posture. I'm going in for my second attack. Oh shit! 
Uh, that's going to be that hits. Uh, it's twenty-seven. Super I, hits. I don't, yeah, I don't know. I don't know why I would hold back. I'm gonna go ahead and do another divine smite. Sweet. Uh, okay, and that's uh, twenty-five damage on the next attack. Nice. Um. Yeah, you mess him right up. And that concludes my turn. Sweet. Um, Bev, you see that as you're slashing into Ambrose? Go ahead and give me a perception check. Great. Ooh, uh, I think it's just a nine. Nine. Yeah. Okay. Um, you don't notice anything. You're just in like a fury um, fighting against Ambrose here. Um, that is Wyatt's turn. On Wyatt's turn, um, just going to keep. Actually, you know what? I'm going to have Wyatt do an intelligence saving throw um, to see whether he does the smart thing and um, keeps trying to crack at JV or whether he gets emotional and tries to go help his dad. He's just this big <laughs> monster. <laughs> That is a natural 17. Um, He has a minus three to intelligence, so that's a 14. I'll say that he's able to keep composed enough to uh, keep cracking at our bud JV here. Uh, And he hits. The right play. (laughs) (laughs) Gotta respect the hustle. 18 slashing damage, half to nine. Seven necrotic damage. Yes. Uh, And then is going to try to bite ya. Nat 20. Oh, Christ. Dust mother. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> I've got a boo-boo. My neck. My back. <laughs> my fanny. My fanny uh, and 28 my 28 damage. Is that half or is bites not half? Bites it? not half. It's necrotic damage. You okay? Yes. <laughs> I probably shouldn't do that again. <laughs> Once was enough. Is that his whole turn? Uh, that is his whole turn. Um, you see, he ball- you see, he's like sucking the ash out of you. Um, and you guys see, JV looks like he's starting to kind of fade away too. Um, and uh, Wyatt looks to be getting strength from um, messing with our friend JV oh, here. Shit. Moonshine, that's your turn. Protect that's my Grimhawk. Turn. I am going to. So, what's going on with Scarlet? You looked at her. She is a skeleton who like looked like she struggled to open her eyes. She can't open this up. Really? She's dead. Yeah. Oh, okay, cool. Uh, then I'm just gonna like real quick take a tiny shit in there. So she dies with my shit <laughs> you open it up. Um, you see, she's Great not move. moving. <laughs> <laughs> I love the tiny shits. Um, okay, so I'm gonna go over and I'm gonna attack Wyatt. Sweet. God fucking damn it. Well, maybe I still hit. 16 to 16 hit. 16 does hit. Yeah, Ooh. bitch. Yeah, he's just All wearing right. a shirt. I hit him for 20. Okay. Fours him for 12. And then I'm going to do, so that's going to be a 32. I hit Y for 32. Okay. And then I'm going to do a level four healing word on JV. Thanks. <laughs> what do you say to me? The healing word is varsity. <laughs> <laughs> Hoorah. <laughs> okay. Um, Wyatt um, went from being on death's door to sucking a bunch of life out of JV and looking a little better on mm. death's door again. Um, end of Moonshine's turn is going to, um, you know what? Uh, he's going to shift focus and swing down on Moonshine. Or you know what? 18. 18. Yeah. Wait, he's going to go ahead and take a bite on Moonshine with a legendary action. Brandon, uh, come on. Shout out to the three Cree. That's <laughs> 15 to hit. Whiffs big time. Cree! Yes. Um, swarms of bats are going to fly over to defend their daddy, Ambrose, and go after Bev here. All miss. I'm hey, attack. Stupid bats. <laughs> uh, bats can't touch this ass. <laughs> it's too flat. That's true, Bev. If you want to build up that thing, you are going to make it more of a target. It's a devil's bargain. <laughs> uh, the swarm um, hits you for 12 okay. on, the, um, on their second round of attacks. At the end of the bats' turn, Wyatt is going to take another crack in Moonshine. Shout out to the two crew. Misses yeah, with his Yeah, three crew, two crew showing up. My yeah. man is already out of legendary actions. He did a bad job this round, um, but that is Ambrose's turn. Ambrose is going to go after Bev. Um, he's going to take um, his first claw attack. Shout out to the two crew. Yeah. This is big Damn. time. Second attack, shout out to the three Cree. Wow. Yes. Uh, Whatever dice to... you are using, keep using it. You know what? I'm going, I'm going to use a different dice. One and uh, done. As he takes his bite attack. Dive in five. Uh, he gets okay. a 21 to hit. Oh, that just hits. Just hits. Okay. So bad. Oh no, the bite's gonna give him, yeah. give him strength back. Let's take out this fucking Wyatt. Twelve piercing damage. Okay. Twelve 
Um, necrotic damage. Does that mean it lowers my total? Yes. Okay. By 12. All right. Okay. Um, then that is Balnor's turn. Um, Balnor's going to rush at these fucking bats. Um, hits on the first attack. Takes out one of these half um, bat swarms. Bat dad. Bat dad. Hits the other one. Bat dad. Um, uh, knocks another one down to half. Five and a half bat swarms left. <laughs> uh, oh, the hero, Balnor. Balnor's like a dad in a cabin who just went outside with a broom. No, he really is like the dad when when bats get in your attic and he yeah. has to deal yeah. with it. Someone has to kill them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. End of Balnor's turn. Um, it takes a Ambrose takes a legendary swipe at Bev and does hit. Oof. Uh, and then is going to legendary do legendary swipe. That don't sound nice. A, le- a swipe of legendary proportions. Uh, Legend. <laughs> you saw me on Boy Tinder and did a legendary swipe. <laughs> 21 slashing damage to you, Bev. Uh-oh. Legendary swipe on Tinder is when you match with somebody and you match with all their Facebook friends at the same time. Oh. <laughs> you swipe yes. so hard it deletes the app. That's not necrotic. <laughs> no. Ah, swipe! <laughs> uh, JV, that's back up to you. Oof. Oh, right. Uh, I will recklessly attack uh, Hulk Dracula. Sweet. <laughs> yeah. Thicula. 27. Ooh. Hits. 28. Uh, that is a lot of damage on death's door. Barely alive. Take my second reckless attack. Yeah, recklessly fuck him up. 23. Hits. Form tackle. 13. JV. <gasps> Finish. Woo! Wyatt yeah! Montgomery. Oh, good lord. I, I, um, grab my axe. I... I put it in both hands like a cane, and I river dance towards him, <laughs> and I chop off his head like it's uh, like uh, I'm hitting a baseball. Chop off his head. Yes. Um, he turns to ash. That's for Bortram. You fuck. <laughs> uh, end of JV's Righteous. turn. Ambrose takes a swipe at Bev. Uh-oh. Uh, that is 19 hit. Doesn't hit. Doesn't hit. Sweet. Yeah. Um, Deadeye's turn. Oh, thank God. All right, we're gonna make a stealth check, bonus action to attack from hiding. That's a nat 20. Yeah! yeah. Pawpaw's just really doing a good job now. Pawpaw's Pawpaw's would've loved, out of you. Would've loved that one on the attack roll, but you know what? Uh, Talk about a critter. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a nice clean joke. <laughs> God damn it. Very clean, very clean. Oh, take that joke in the bath with you. Definitely. Oh, uh, that's gonna be a 24 to hit. Sweet hits. I love being mean to someone else's dad. <laughs> yeah. uh, that's going to be 16 radiant damage to Ambrose Montgomery. Sweet. Uh, and I'm going to use my second attack to reload Luann. And I'm. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Popo, get it done! <laughs> <laughs> she starts furiously spitting bullets. Oh, no, Popo, the other way, the other way. <laughs> <laughs> Don't swallow any Popo. <laughs> You know you have a list that you can eat and a list that you can't eat, and we're working on that. You don't want explosive diarrhea, literally. <laughs> end, of de- end of Deadeye's turn. Uh, Ambrose takes another swipe at Bev uh, and hits. Oh, shit. 15 damage. Bev's down. Bev goes down from okay, a slash, though. We got though. you. We got you. Uh, that is Bev's turn. Bev, go ahead and give me a... Death save? Death saving throw. Gladly. Come on. Oh, that's an 18. 18. That's Sweet. a pass. Great. That is um, Moonshine's turn. Okay. I am going to, you know what, I'd like to healing word young Beverly, so I'm going to just, yeah, I think I'm just going to straight up attack um, Ambrose. Sweet. With Rosaline. Shout out to the two crew. Okay. But I will also healing word young Bev, but I will still, I will still spores him for 12. Nice. Yes. Uh, and then... Uh, Heal Beverly. I'm gonna. I'll do a third level. Okay. okay. What's that get me? Only 14. But <laughs> bear in mind it was a bonus action, so I was trying to do some damage. See what I can get. I had hit. I'm just trying to get you back to your feet. I'll give you more heals later. Thanks for getting me back up. Let's kill this dad. Yeah. Let's kill this dad. Uh, Bev pops back up. Um, that is the bat's turn. Bats are all going to descend on Beverly. That's on Bev. They all miss on the first attack. They are not. Great at fighting. Um, one hits on the second attack for a big four damage. Oh, Bev. <laughs> no. I've tried river dancing. It didn't work. <laughs> um, and then 
He is going, Ambrose is going to take his cracks at Bev. Takes his first swipe. Ugh. 21 to hit. That hits. 12 damage. Ugh, I'm, I'm down again. Bev goes right back down. Um, it turns to Moonshine. Takes a second claw attack. Come on, come on. Uh, hits. Uh, that's a 29 to hit. It does hit, surprisingly. Uh, 21 damage. Okay. Slashing, so halved. No, I'm not in a bar. I'm not, not a, barbarian right okay. now. Okay. Um, and then it's gonna try to bite you, Moonshine. Thirty to hit. Ooh. Actually, that doesn't hit my armor class. Thirty-one. <laughs> uh, Moonshine, you take fourteen piercing damage, twenty necrotic damage. So that's sixty-three damage, but luckily I still got hit points left. Very good. Um, that just is just a handful, just a small <laughs> handful of hit points. That is Balnor's turn. Balnor is going to rush forward and jump at the bats. <laughs> um, hits. Bless you, Balnor. Takes out another. Thing of bats. Goes after another one. Hits. And does a lot of damage to another swarm of bats. Still bats? Still bats. At the end of Balnor's turn, takes a legendary swipe at Moonshine. Hits. Okay. Uh, that's a 20 to hit. That hits. Okay. 19 slashing damage. Is there anything else coming my way? Uh, not on this legendary action, oh. no. I'm still standing! Yes! She's still standing. Sturdy. I have one hit point. <laughs> oh, one, st- one sturdy point. That's a sturdy shroom. <laughs> that is... Hit point. Uh, JV's turn. Uh, JV's gonna take a full dash action and leap. Just kidding. <laughs> <He's so sad. laughs> I don't know if... I fucking hate you Draculas. <laughs> Bortram's not here anymore, and I think I'm gonna curse. <laughs> I'm gonna take a reckless attack at Ambrose. Okay, there you go. Nat twenty. Yeah, yeah. Beautiful. Thirty-two. Thirty-two damage. Jeez. Yeah. Um, First yeah, he had uh, sucked a bunch of life out of Moonshine. Um, now is uh, looking um, back to how he was. Great. Medium. Um, huh. I'll t- attack him again. Yep. 20, not net. Hits. 19. Uh, 19 damage. Nice. Uh, that is um, end of JV's turn. Ambrose is going to take a legendary action and swipe at Moonshine. Nat 20. Oh. Bye, bitches. No. 24 damage. Uh, I mean, I'm down. Okay, Moonshine goes down. That is oh. Deadeye's turn. You blood-sucking bourgeois pig. <laughs> you keep your dirty fangs on my sister. Paw, paw, you pull. <laughs> uh, Deadeye's sprinting straight for him. Nice. Yeah. I'll run out. Fucking Paw Paw's um, pulling at the trigger. I do uh, have a question, though. Since I only had one hit point left, he... It, Oh, he took a swipe he at me, spikes. right? So he wasn't t- taking... Yeah, blood. the bites take um, multiple legendary actions, and he's okay. got to keep you guys all down. There's too many of you. Worst comes to worst, I guess. Hard one can just come back to life and avenge us. Well, I mean, my ambulance... <laughs> yeah. God, uh, he's uh, at least got his independence gonna be so now. going to be so fucking sad. <laughs> oh, uh, 18 to hit. 18 hits. Okay. Uh, 17 damage to Ambrose. Uh, sweet. I'm going to run up... Uh, that's your 17 damage. Take another attack on him. Did I just run in down the hall, firing on this dude? Moonshine and Bev down. Okay. Fuck, I'm sweating. All right, this one's a radiant bullet. Uh, 29 to hit. Uh, 29 hits. Uh, ten damage, uh, and yeah, Dead Eye is just gonna close like right on top. He's like getting getting up in his shit, like melee. Gets up in his shit. Okay, um, Dead Eye, you get up in his shit. Um, are you back far enough that he can't attack you with a melee attack right away? Or are you getting right up on him? Um, I'm getting. I don't want him to swing at Moonshine while she's down. Okay, I'm getting right up on him. Dead Eye, you get up at him, um, and uh, he's going to swing at you with his claws. His legendary action, his last one of the turn. Um, and he hits you with a swipe for 13 damage. Just okay. slashing. That is Bev's turn. Bev, go ahead and give me a death saving right. throw. Come on, Bev. Uh, it's a natural 20. Oh, don't you pop back up. Bev's one. Bev's one. Yes. Bev, 
Woo. with a yeah. with a nat twenty, you fucking pop back up with one HP, and <sighs> you look down uh, to where Bortram fell. Yeah, and you see, uh, you saw his sword was glowing bright white. Um, you saw it uh, turned back to a regular longsword, and then started clashing on the floor. You see, as you wake up, you jolt awake. Uh, you see the sword on the floor is glowing gray. Gray. Uh, can I like? Uh, right. I believe you do, uh, pop up at the end of your turn. All right. No, cool. no, no. You pop up at the beginning of your turn. Nice. Oh, you yeah. have a full action and a movement. Gotcha. And you a free are... object interaction if you wanted to, say, pick up a weapon on the ground. Um, D&D okay. &D lawyer. Is it my turn? It is your turn. Okay. Rare, okay. rare, rare. Okay. Yeah, I just, I, I pump Moonshine with 40 HP. Yeah, buddy. <laughs> Moonshine pops back up looking healthy. And I just break into a sprint towards this sword. Sweet. Um, you rush over. Um, you pick it up. Um, you feel surging holy power in your hand. I turn back around. With one HP, I'm limping a little bit, but I just prepare to walk towards Ambrose. And as I do, I recite the Grey Knight's Creed. <laughs> as paladins and demons clash, I shall now take my oath of ash. Through wicked light and holy dark, I shall become a silver spark. Like morning mist that guards the day, I shall become a knight of gray. Kalu, Kalei, Kalu, Kalei! And I swing as hard as I can. You don't Only have the action. dust mother. What? You don't have another action. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, you just, you, but you, you rush forward, um, yeah. but you're super injured and you're limping. All right, but I'm rushing towards him. You're rushing towards mm -hmm. him. And I'm saying that. Uh, that is um, Moonshine's turn. And Moonshine, you're fucking popped back up. I'm popped back up. Um... And you see uh, the tides have fucking turned. You see Ooh. Ambrose uh, looks very concerned now. Was looking very confident very a moment ago. Very concerned. All right, then. I guess instead of thinking about healing, I'm just going to lightning bolt him. Sweet. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and lightning bolt him for fifth level. Oh, my God. He does get a dexterity saving throw. Okay. Natural five. That's going <laughs> to naturally fail. Um, all right. I just rolled three sixes and a five on my first roll. Ooh. It, so six, six, six. The power of the devil's in me. <clears throat> Jesus. Uh, but I still have more to roll. 45. Woo. <laughs> Moonshine, <gasps> no fucking joke. He had 45 hit points. <gasps> oh, <laughs> Moonshine. Finish him. I want to, with my bolt of lightning, push him onto Beverly's gray sword. Yes. So he just gets skewered like the kebabs we had for lunch before we recorded this. <laughs> my God. Lightning hits him. He begins to seize. He staggers towards Beverly. Uh, <gasps> Beverly rushes forward, stabs him, this explosion of holy light, um, and he turns to mist. And you guys are left in this tomb <sighs> out of combat. The bats, the bats scatter um, as soon as uh, Balnor's still swinging at them, uh, <laughs> but they they fly off. Moonshine, yeah. Let's water the garden. Yes, yep. let's water. Oh let's yeah, yeah. Quack. So now I'm going around and I'm doing create water on all the uh, on all the crypt. You go through um, all of the different caskets next to each statue. Um, they are all in various states of I would um, like to regeneration. All of them, though, I peek it open. As soon as they they see me, I say, "Hi, bitch, water." <laughs> <laughs> Waylon and Bo are conscious enough to see you and go, "Oh fuck!" Uh, and you cover them in water. Um, you guys know just from like vampire lore and everything. Thing. These guys cannot fucking regenerate with a casket full of water. Um, the other guys have recently been misted. Um, you do see fog in there. Um, you fill it up with water um, and put the case back on the casket. And you guys do see um, at the end of the hall, um, set up differently than the rest of the caskets, is this statue of... Um, of Ambrose Montgomery sitting atop a throne. You see the throne is like this um, stone block, uh, and you see this little cubby hole, and there is a handle red. as if to pull out like a coffin or something. Well, first off, Bev, I'm sorry I didn't heal you, but I oh. felt like it feels like he regenerates, so I wanted to, I felt like we could just take him out then. I've never not trusted your intuition, okay, and I'm not cool, starting cool. now. Just wanted to clarify that. Yeah. Oh, how are you, you okay? doing? Was... Oh, I just I saw you fall down. 
Oh, oh, did I bring it in? I'm feeling fine. Oh. <laughs> Papa, Papa got real sad, and that made me sad. Oh. Papa, I just want to say, can I just take a minute and say, you showed courage Meow. and bravery Meow. and ingenuity. Meow. You and see, he nudges, he nudges dead eye, <laughs> looks at his face. No, man. Hey, take the compliment. You have a natural talent for gunslinging. <laughs> <laughs> Great Meow. ferocity. Great yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you mean you got a cool head under fire, friend? And yeah. I shouldn't I, expect any less from. I pulled the bullet out of his mouth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he was gonna try and swallow that. That is a truth that tasty. we gotta live with. I'm gonna unlash Pawpaw and hand him gently back to Moonshine. Come on in. Come come uh, back into the bib, baby. I think we all gotta bring it in, right? <laughs> yeah, bring it in, everyone. Bring it in. JV, get over here, Balnor. Come on. Uh, uh, I love a hug. Hey, thanks for killing all the bats. Hey. Oh, it's just yeah, interesting. I, just, I, just, my best. I haven't fought with people that I cared about for a long time. <clears throat> uh, oh, ooh, that's very hard uh, emotionally. Oh, yeah, love I is the hardest understand. whiskey. Yeah, being a sneaky type, you probably tend to be out of the way a little bit. Oh, I don't fight ever. I just murder people. Yeah. <laughs> I'm mostly not interested in long combats. Yeah. Ooh, that's a lot. <clears throat> well, it was an honor to fight beside you. Sister, you ain't kidding. We almost Ooh. all survived. <laughs> yeah, just the yeah JV, I only, forgot. Only my best Varsity friend is rather. gone. <laughs> I'm so sorry. How you how you feeling? It's all right. It's not bad. You know, I think that maybe you could kind of turn the Our Lady of Penance in, in a new direction and in, institute a looser policy with some of the curse words and whatnot. Yeah. Why, why the heck not? <laughs> <laughs> Can't laugh. <laughs> Um, do you okay. guys want to take like a little short rest, or yeah. you guys invest it? What yeah. are you What yeah. are you guys doing with this? Um, you see a handle under the statue on like the block part. Uh, looks like the handle to a huge drawer. Well, so I want to get that gem drawer, though. Do we see that gem anywhere? You don't see it anywhere. It might be in that little cubby. Yeah, I think so. Um, I got geez, so it is it. just to be clear. It is a very big cubby. Uh, it looks like something a coroner would use. Mm. Yeah. Oh, so you're saying we can't just drown him, same as we drown everyone else. You would need to pull on whatever this is. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, I guess let's... Hey, why don't you all take a step back and let me pull on this thing? Okay, Dead Eye, we got your back, though. I, JV you... brought up a good point, which was that the last time we opened something, uh, a lot of dark energy came out of it. So maybe we should be extra cautious this Quite time. an explosion last time. Yeah, big one. Yeah, that is true. Um, should we maybe go ahead and short rest first? So okay. that we can get our health back in case. We uh, remember, you don't have any of the hit dice that you used earlier. Yeah. Okay. Right, well, yeah, yeah. can we? How about this? How about we just um, step to the side and I thorn whip it open. Okay. Okay. So I can like grab the handle of the cubby. Tell with me my how you're positioning whip. yourself. Like we were standing in front of it, but now I want to go as far back and like to the left as I can, so that we're like diagonal. Got it. So okay. I can just be like whoop. Mm. Sweet. Um, Moonshine, go ahead and make an attack roll. I'm going to be readying an action to give a help action to Moonshine to give her advantage on a dexterity saving throw. Great. So you're like ready to grab her. 14. 14. Um, Moonshine, you are able to wrap the whip around um, this Whoa. handle. Um, it takes a couple tries. I'm not going to make you roll constant attack rolls because you're out of combat. It doesn't matter. Yeah. Um, Moonshine, um, you begin tugging on it, and it's um, pretty heavy. Can we all like kind of yeah hug up on her? Sweet. You guys all hug up. Um, you pull. It's <gasps> in an awkward angle because you guys are uh, to the side. You guys see a casket slides out. Um, it crashes to the floor, and behind it, a bunch of this black smoke once again explodes <laughs> out um, from behind it, uh, shoots off into the room. Um, you guys are to the side. You guys are not hit by uh, the cone. Okay, good. Good, good. thing, JV. Uh, nice booby trap, dumbass. <laughs> and then I guess, like, anyone who, I guess maybe, Bev, you stay back because I know that you're feeling hurt. Um, I'm not feeling it. I am. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's what I mean. Mm -hmm. Uh and then I guess let's just go look at whatever's in there. Yep. Okay. Who's going? I'll go. I'll go. Okay. I'll go. Balnor and I are on Bat Patrol. Great. Yeah. You yeah. guys are on Bat Patrol. Um, Balnor looks at you. Hey, man, can I have your old sword? Uh, My sword sucks. Oh. Actually, as we're doing this, uh, did did anything drop from Bortram other than the sword? Did like his armor or anything clatter to the ground? Just the sword. Just the sword. Cool. Mm. Um, before we do this, I think Dad is going to sadly just kind of say, "One sec, before we do open this up, 
Uh, and he's going to go look around Wyatt's hand and around the floor. Oh, oh and, yeah. Oh, I don't want it. No one's got it. It might, it's probably just gone. Um, but, you know. Can, we'll let's to, all do it. I'm, I want to give all, a help to his investigation. Yeah, uh, go ahead and make an investigate check. check. We're all down yeah. on our knees looking for his contacts. Yeah. I'll give him help. Uh, oh, that's going to be uh, 16. 16. Um, you uh, look around and you can't you can't find your hand or your eye. It's okay. I'm so sorry. It's all right. I... Um, yeah. We'll get you a new possum for your hand. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's real sweet, yeah. y'all. I appreciate it. Um, yeah. we'll, we'll figure something out because we're getting out of Grimhawk. We're going to get out of Grimhawk, and once that happens, we're, we'll see. We're going to get you a cool steampunk hand. It's going to be even better. You're going to have to rev it up like a lawnmower. Yeah, putting kerosene in there, lighting it up. Yeah. That'd be dope. Um, I, um, that's real nice. That's a real nice thought. I appreciate okay. it. I'm very sorry, though. Oh, it's all right. Me here. Me here. Pat's your shoulder. Okay. Uh, let's open this coffin up. Yeah. All right. Um, you guys open the coffin up, and you see mist. Uh, obviously, Ambrose has not had time to regenerate in any way, um, but sitting in the coffin is this gem necklace. Uh, this um, ruby gem that was um, around Ambrose's neck. And Moonshine, you hear a voice in your head go, I don't know if the others will understand, but you are a witch, and maybe you'll help me. I think I'm just going to be like, you know, that's a mighty fine necklace. I was wondering if I could hang it around my neck. Unless someone else... I mean, just while we shuttle it to get destroyed or decursed or whatever. Mm-hmm. Balnor, and Balnor and I are playing uh, bat volleyball and don't hear what's going on. <laughs> I think, sister, the best thing to do is going to be put that in the bag and go get your friend a hard one. Okay. Yeah, yeah. That's a good call. Wait, put it in don't, the bag. don't listen to him. Listen, okay? <laughs> my name... Is Pendagost. I was once commander of the Dark Lord's armies, but I betrayed him and I took the throne for myself. Ambrose Montgomery supported me in my rebellion, and in exchange, I gave him a token, a fragment of my heart. I was recently unseated by a certain Galad Roselle, and my consciousness returned to this small piece of me. I can I can help you like I helped Ambrose. I could give you power. I could get someone out of a contract. Um, and you get this sense, uh, this strong sense that he's referring to Deadeye. Okay. I know your brother. Okay, y'all. Uh... I know that this is going to seem like a very uncool thing to do, but this necklace is speaking to me, and so I might just hold on to it a little bit. It is making me promises, and I know not to trust that, but it's saying it has, it, it's the heart, it's a fragment of the heart of the last guy who sat on the throne, that Galad Roselle unseated. Pentagast. Pentagast. Pentagos? Yeah, Pentagos. Okay, scores two to three. I'm sorry. I know it's bad. I, I, I just, I can't help but be honest about this. Sister, you got to believe me when I tell you. There is no good deal that comes from making bargains with that being. I should know. Is that who took your, who you made a deal with? I made a deal with Pentagos a long time ago. I said I wanted more than anything to be a hero, and he said he could make that come true. All right, then. Yeah, I can't put the shit on. All right. I, I mean, I, I really, I don't, I don't want to live in this tomb. I, I used to be a dark lord. It was so yeah, freaking I, rad. Hey, but I don't this, know if you can hear me, but yeah, it's like a, a two-way. If there's like, if yeah. I have a line of communication to you. Yeah, I hear you. Here's the deal. Yeah, it be insane for me to put you on yeah <laughs> given that you are you just said that you were 
that you betrayed the Dark Lord they to call inherit me, they be called me the betrayer. Yourself. That's true, but I'm just a little. Oh, uh, yeah. B- b- asterisk on that. His title is the betrayer. So oh, just well, a heads yeah. up. Okay, yeah. so your name's yeah. the betrayer. No, 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 no. And me, no, chill, this chill, innocent chill, little everyone. crick elf. You think all of a sudden no. I'm going to pull a personality okay, okay. swing Tell where I put you around my no, neck? No, 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 no. Check out. I just okay. think that maybe, you know, let's, you've led real Let's wrong. all chill for one minute. Let's chill one second, okay? No deals. No deals. You just take me along with you outside of this tomb. I do not want I to be destroyed and forgotten here. You take me out of this tomb and I will free your brother from his contract. Cool. Okay. I'm going to take you out of out of this from this tomb in the bag, though. Yeah, I'll go in the bag. Okay. <laughs> right. <laughs> My Fuck. God. He's Wait. willing. Uh, y'all, good news. He's willing to debase himself by going in the bag. See, that's what they call leverage. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck me. <laughs> Absolutely <laughs> fuck me. I used to be a goddamn god. Just gonna slide him right Anyways, in between. Anyways, I just fucking like, hate Galad I wish you the best of luck in avoiding all the old tuna in there. All right, but I'm going in the bag. <laughs> hey, bud, you're, I'm wearing you now as a bag. <laughs> <laughs> fuck. <laughs> all right, no. All right. Uh, well, uh, provided... Uh, you know, you stay true to your word, uh, cause you know I can always just suck his soul back. So uh, you know, you, you gotta get me the hell out of here. Oh, right? I'm gonna stay true to my word. All right, um, I'm gonna stay true to my word. You hear? You're getting out of this crib. At this so at this say- point, he's speaking aloud so everybody can hear. Okay. Oh. Oh, okay. So we get you out of this crypt and you let Dead Eye off the hook. Yeah, but you can't like bury me or do any kind of other bullshit. No, we won't we'll, bury you. Yeah, we'll get you out of the crypt. Okay, just to be clear, here's what the deal is. You can't freaking bury me. I swear this guy was cooler when I was a kid. I swear to God. I well, am well, now, young dead well, now I'm not a for this. God. I mean, I, I, he's he's scrambling I'm and a, it's making me look I'm bad. a goddamn necklace. I'm a goddamn necklace, everyone. And I live in a fucking tomb that has just been conquered and I'm fucked. I'm just God, absolutely I feel fucked. better about how I've weathered yeah. this contract, no, honestly. This yeah. is bad news. All right, everyone, everyone fucking chill everyone listen up okay so you're gonna put me in the bag you're gonna get me out of here i will let you your brother out of his contract then after that uh, we'll, we'll negotiate further yeah well, well all right all right yeah cool cool, cool. all right cool put me in the bag yeah all right <laughs> balnor is um, eager to be put in the bag <laughs> oh it's kind of fun in here yeah uh, he gets put in there um and uh dead eye you here in your head all right, you're 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 free or whatever. Come on, man, put a little pomp on. You're, it. Uh, <laughs> well, don't just say. I thought I was gonna like get to like I don't know. I thought I could like. So grant, you guys like, are talking out loud again. Powers. I don't know if you wanted to go into yeah. your heads or. No, right. um, your uh, uh, your time has uh, been served in my. Your watch has ended. <laughs> God damn, this man! I so, mean, you. This is honestly. I'm a necklace. I, I accept. Thing all right, you've done, I'm a I fucking necklace. Honestly, I accept. I fully accept. I acknowledge that I am released as of this moment. I'm a free being. That said, from someone who's no longer under your thumb, you got to get help, brother. <laughs> I mean, this is. I mean, I need, are, dude. You're freaking dead. You're just a dead guy now. Yeah, I know. I'm down a hand. And an eye and a life. But I got a soul and family. And I finally know which is worth more. Oh, more we baby. Oh. <laughs> Dead eye, you um feel yourself uh fading. You feel like <gasps> your consciousness fading. What? You're Dead looking eye? real pale there, Dead friend. Eye? Sis. I can't thank you enough. This is good. You want this? This is the exit from Grimhawk that... We can get him a possum leg and another possum off here. <laughs> uh, maybe a... Just <laughs> bones falling apart. A possum pelvis. Oh, dear. Dead Eye, is this, is this okay with you? Sis, I feel like I failed you. You didn't fail me. Just here. We're in the Crimson Hills already. Just don't let me die in Grimhawk. Just carry me out to the I hills. Won't. I won't. Just carry me out to the hills real quick. I All just, right. I cast long stride on myself and I run as far <laughs> as I can. Um, Moonshine um, picks up Deadeye. Deadeye, you're already super weak. Um, you feel like the skin that you do have is already starting to melt away and Moonshine um, rushes um, right out uh, onto the hills. Deadeye, I met you at a time when I felt really bad about who I was. And knowing that you're a part of me makes me feel 
better about who I am. And I cannot thank you enough for that. Sis, I was completely lost. I had no one and nothing, and every day was endless pain. I didn't like this place and I didn't like these people because I didn't like myself. You're the best part of me and I think you're the best part of every crick out there. Oh, did I? You do us all proud. I mean, I'm really torn because I wish we could have spent so much more time together, but I'm also so grateful that we spent any time at all together because we could have missed each other entirely. I hate to think about what would have happened to me, but made me more hate to think about who I still would have been if I'd never met you. I give him a very, very big hug. Slim? Y yeah, I'm here. You take care of my sister, kid. I know you got the moves. If she keeps taking care of me, I'll keep taking care of her. And tell your friend with the fangs that there's a lot of fun to be had while you're dead. And I know... <laughs> I know there's a way out for him, too. You know, I know you might not like old Cobb much, but you both know how to keep it light. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my ribs! Did I? Did I? <sighs> Sis. Yeah? Time for me to hit the old Dusty. I love you. I love you. Did I, uh, you feel yourself slipping away. Um, you guys see Dead I close his um, one eye that's still there and dead eye you suddenly jolt awake um, you open <laughs> your one eye you are not healed but you are laying on death's door and you are in the crick <gasps> you have transported to this exact location on the material plane. You feel yourself dying, but you can hear the babbling waters of the creek, the warm, fucking musky, hot breeze, and you hear a nanner fly as it buzzes past your face. Uh, Dead Eye looks up with his one green eye, Pure Crick Elf Green looks at the Nannerfly. <sighs> it's good to come home. And that's where we'll end our session. Oh, <laughs> oh my Laura. <laughs> oh. Hell fucking yeah, dude. Dope. That's <laughs> dope, 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 dope. He has returned to the mud. <laughs> <laughs> the mud what birthed him. So mug, bravo, mug, mug. fucking cool. From muck and return to muck. Uh, uh, oh, man. ashes to ashes, muck to muck. Ashes to ashes, muck to muck. Y'all don't get any more. Let's, we're talking about it on the short rest. Yeah, yeah. My yeah. goodness, guys, head on over to Patreon.com/slash/NadPod. That's N-A-D-D P-O-D. Don't sing yet, oh. guys. Thank you so much to our guest, Brennan Lee Mulligan. Give it up, wow. for Dead Eye. Oh. Dead Eye. Honor, Snap pleasure cake. of a lifetime. Woo! What a cool fucking arc. That was wow. so fun. What a great fucking finale. Yeah. <laughs> Again, oh, I save it for the short rest. Save okay, it. Okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. I'm uh, very emotional. Um, I know. Oh, my God. That was so fucking badass when uh, Deadeye ran out to uh, risk in his own hide to help Moonshine. Probably the first time in a long time. He was a sneak uh, thief and a murderer, but you fuck with my sister, I'm going to run right at you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Words to live by. My goodness. Uh, cool, guys. Um, who has things to plug? Brennan, what do you have do to that? plug? I, I don't know. Here's what I have to plug. Fucking beautiful storytelling with friends and a collaborative yeah, game of Yeah, guys, you know, we're heroes. not going to plug anything this let's week. Let's just let's plug D&D. Let's, let's plug D&D. Play with your great. friends. What a play great damn game. Yeah. Guys, you know what? If if you also just love this great damn game with your friends, uh, tweet, about, tweet about the show using hashtag NADPOD. That's N-A-D-D-P-O. D. Let's give a one last we are we are for our friend Dead Eye. A nice somber one. We are we are the youth of the nation. We are we are the youth of the nation.
Hello everybody, Caldwell here. The time has come to shout out our benevolent council of elders. Let's get to it. Brad D, the only pebble pot that isn't Craven, has to call ahead when they go to the movies with their family to make sure none of the previews are too scary. J Loma 72, aka Steelbreaker, Hard One's Gymspiration, keeps their rump plump with a vegan protein powder made from powdered mayo nuts. Dylan B, a sword wielding wizard surrounded by a floating army of blades at all times, also has some trust issues, so the floating army of blades end up being a great visual metaphor for how they keep people at a distance. Danny P, Bohemia's resident artist, painted Hard One Senior Portrait at the Dwarfenage, although they were actually trying to paint a still life. Hard one just got in the way. Spencer Caskbrew, patron elder of libations, ale maker to gods and heroes of Bohemia alike, currently pouring their entire collection out for Deadeye. Beardman Dan, the longest beard in all of Bohemia. Keep your gum away from that thing. Scott D, the bastard child of Ambrose Montgomery, who's thinking that this is their chance to make a play for power. Hermes W, the Bat King, wears a cape, which in conjunction with the wings, feels kind of redundant. Spartus, the biggest, meanest green teen, uses the holy light of Pelor to light ants on fire with a magnifying glass. Rude. Adam R, the R-rated assassin. Next up on their hit list, the MPAA. Those prudes are going to wish they gave Adam a better rating. Danielle, the dastardly dame. Danielle is so dastardly, they mooned Papa during his first shooting attempt and actually caused the misfire. QC, aka Haldor Frostback, MVP of the Giant Wars, crewed on the SS Stormborn and fought alongside Elias and Red. Only hit on Lydia once and was super respectful when she told him to back off. Nice. Daniel Yu, aka Multifor, the mini faced magician. Kind of like Arya Stark, except Multifor actually uses their powers. Jordan DJ, legendary DJ of the realm, working on a dance remix of whatever devastating music we put under Deadeye's farewell. Jeffrey S, Lord of the Fjord, born of the sword and the thrice never gored. That's right, Jeff's run with the bulls three times and never gotten gored. Cutter W, a high elf dandy turned crick barkitect. Cutter's recently been inspired by Deadeye's whole house full of junk aesthetic. Tasteful. John S, aka Schubert the Mushroom, recently hung a skirt of tassels from their cap and baby, it's a hit on the dance floor. Ryan M, Hard One's Ram who survived being abandoned in the frigid north, only to succumb to a privileged Parisian ennui. Elena C, a demigod who accidentally created dryads when they sneezed halfway through an awaken spell in the forest. Michael McD, head mixologist at the Blue Mana Inn, makes a mocktail so mean you'd think it was a tumbler of scotch. Andrew M, the buffest lad in all of Bohemia, has outwrestled all of their nannies and most of their tutors. What a unit. Victor T, Balnor's boy, whose loving dad was ripped from his family and transported to another world. Can't believe they're gonna have to celebrate their high school graduation without old pop. But hey, anything for Bohemia, I guess. Justin I, a shell who is actually grateful to the vampire that sucked them of their intelligence, wit, and soul because they read Mary Kondo and are very into the idea of getting rid of everything these days. Jacob C, a rogue who's gone rogue, which means they actually play by the rules now. Nice, Jacob. Elena M, was the safety instructor who was unfortunately out to lunch when Deadeye first blew himself up in Esri. Come on, Elena. Mick Pucks, the amazing Codemaster who programmed our website. Also, the Codemaster who designed the aforementioned defective gun. A lot of guilty people in our Council of Elders. Don't worry, your secret's safe with us. Earl and Kathleen L, two nasty Frostwind teens who went back to a rowdy dwarfin lifestyle even after the others learned their lessons. Jibe G, the chillest tabaxi in all of Bohemia. Now that's one cool cat. Jostrich, the jock ostrich. Hangs out with Jibe G and dunks all of their enemies' heads in the toilet. That's a lot of swirlies. Damiel R, Ram Daniel's evil twin. All of the Rams survived their trek out of the valley until Damiel set up a tripwire and knocked them all off a cliff. Curse you, Damiel. Curse you to hell. Jennifer V has a V that's even more vicious than Cobb's. Deadeye deeply resents that V. Destin C, a powerful, all-knowing cockroach who is a benevolent god to all bugs. Devin B, the Bodega Lord, a deity who has more than a few dalliances in the back of their deli. 
Michael L., the bravest hero in all of Shadowfell, was killed on their first day there. Sam H., Alanis' dealer, also Egwene's dealer. Super problematic. She's still a kid, Sam. Come on. Sergio Salazar Solomon Zacharias de Sequani, seventh of his name. A sexy Peruvian snake folk with sweet snake patterns on his skin. Sergio is so sexy, he rolls charisma checks with super advantage. That's like five D20s. Trele the Crayfe, who has a lot to say. That's right, Trele was recently cursed and has been screaming for 10 days straight. It's driving them insane. Uh, good luck, Trele. We're rooting for you. Aaron G, master of the banishment spell. Aaron loves to banish the sails off of airships and cause them to plummet out of the sky. Thousands have died from Aaron's good, good goofs. Jory S, a jacked wizard. Jory accidentally got buff from lifting enormous spellbooks all day. Can I get that workout routine, please? Alucard, a reverse Dracula, beloved by JV. Aw. Baby Doc, the only doctor to ever perform their own C-section. Kind of like a chestburster from Alien. Horrifying! Adam H. is the envy of Beverly after collecting every doll in the Bohemian Boys collection. Oh, over 400 dolls! Impossible! Colin G., the inspiration for Bev's charismatic Colin boy doll, comes with her own top hat. Wow, the top hat is the same size as them. Impressive. Ryan, Hard Ones Ram. Ryan died and went to Shadowfell, then quickly ascended to Dark Lord and is actually doing pretty well. Sorry, Galad. Big Buck, pregnant elk moonshine's elkin baby, has buck teeth, strange crooked antlers, and weirdly enough, 19 eyes. That's a look. Richard F., a paladin who was so blessed by Pelor that they could fly. Richard flew up to the sun to meet their god, then unfortunately exploded due to overheating. Richard X. Machina, introduced the crick to regular water. That's right, the Cricks have been huffing weird fumes for so long, they had never had regular water before now, and boy, were they dehydrated. Troy McSee, Balnor's rival at Tuesday Bowling, rolls at least an 8 on every frame. That is impressive. Cannibalistic Cthulhu, trying out the raw food movement and just kind of biting into people zombie style. It tastes pretty good. Just be sure to put down a tart, bud. Sam L, a polymorph dwarf. Can polymorph into anything, but it's always just a little bit smaller, and it's always adorable. Dom R, a Pepsi Genasi. Some folks would describe their personality as bubbly. Ha ha ha. Very good. Josh S, the revived cyborg version of Josh the Kobold. Josh's quads are made of pure iron, and they're still jack shit compared to hard one. Hell yeah. Blitzbreak Dimitri, owner of Dwarger's Big Borger. Recently opened a play pit for children inside of Dwargers. Many a child have gone into the ball pit and not resurfaced. Not good. Caleb Storm, cupbearer in Cord's Great Hall. Got the job after a promotion from Cord's Medium Hall. Kind of just Cord's Mudroom, to be honest. Nicholas C. has starred in every single movie ever made in Bohemia and is now focusing on their music career. Nicholas plays bass in a band called Air Elementals. Rock on, Nicholas. Matt L., a dragonborn chef who prepares their food by smoking it with their own mouth. Kind of gross, but it tastes awesome. Mike H., a chosen angel who has robotic wings and prefers oat milk. Way cooler than the other angels. Naturally. Kevin S., a fisherman wizard who casts spells and lines. When Kevin has a bad day on the water, they just kill every fish within a thousand foot radius with a spell. Matthew E., a rat folk with a really long rat tail both on their butt and their head. So, two long rat tails. But it's in a hot way. Not gross. We promise. Samuel B. The pin is mightier than the sword. Samuel murders their foes with a pin. Tilford G. Author of the hit children's book and movie, Ulfgar Goes Punch. Also author of the mega flop, Ulfgar Goes Punch 2. Doc Alpha, the drunk monk, an enlightened drunken master water genasi who always forgets to drink themself in between drinks. You gotta hydrate, Doc. Curtis S., a grim hawk shell who recently invented transparent sunglasses. It's just frames, but the sun isn't that bright, so it works out. Colton B., once beat Deadeye in a game of Big Buck Hunter, but only because Deadeye didn't get a surprise round on the Bucks. Yin's Christian T., recently replaced their huge bag of gloves with just one big glove-shaped bag. It's more effective, and they can carry other shit in there. Very practical, Yens. 
Gage M, a quarrelsome little crick youngin who is often placed in the timeout sack, but is so ornery they don't even make out in it. They just wrestle. Psh, wasteful if you ask me. Tiavana Saragon, an Asimar paladin who drunkenly swore a blood oath but forgot what for. Nonetheless, they go out every night looking for whoever they made their promise to. Mostly, Tia Vienna has been searching in taverns and curbs, getting absolutely sloshed on the hunt. Godspeed, Tia Vienna. Aaron C., a kinku with a beak so long they don't need a sword to kill their foes. Anyone who crosses Aaron gets pecked. Hannah F., a commercial airship captain. Basically exactly like Hard One's dad, but they're only a little more addicted to Arcane. Montana Monarch, founding member of the Big Sky Brotherhood. Mostly an enclave of folks who like to eat bison burgers. Sign me up. Ellen D, the fiercest woman in Bohemia. So fierce she legit castrated Scoutmaster Denny, and he hadn't even done anything. We're okay with it. Carborough Chapel Hill FPV, Hard Ones Ram's new best friend. Carborough has been taking Ryan out to lavish meals and amazing concerts. So awesome! <laughs> what a great life Ryan has! Incredible! Chad A. Bohemia's only Pokemon trainer. Chad spends their day throwing rocks at dragons, and frankly, it is not working out well for them. Reese N.S., a Feywild sea hag who owns the island next to Alanis, is worried because Alanis hasn't answered their phone calls and also because Alanis borrowed their pontoon boat and still has not returned it. TJ M, a barbarian from the Cracktooth clan that called in sick the day of the battle for Moonstone. Don't worry though, they died of the flu. RPKB, R2D2's less helpful cousin. Basically an oversized penny presser that Professor Duddle taught emotions as a prank. Taylor S, aka Trast the Traveler. Trast has visited so many youth hostels that they are now immune to every disease known to man. Anime Intellect, the god of anime. Every night they feast upon an enormous pile of delicious meat and ramen personally drawn by Hayao Miyazaki. Zolo Dolo, the most powerful weapon in Bohemia. Only the strongest of fighters can wield Zolo Dolo, mostly due to the fact that Zolo Dolo is a sword made of bees. Joshua C, the titular Grim Hawk for which the city is named. When Joshua's wings darken the air, take cover else you'll be taken to their lair and forced to listen to Joshua's lectures on the dire realities of global warming. Yikes. Larissa J, the Nosferatu with the most Feratu. That's right, Larissa is a vivacious vampire whose house parties never suck. <coughs> Genevieve F, a fry elf, a powerful elf who can summon scalding oil at will. Genevieve's power is strongest every year when the county fair comes to town. Dylan CM, the wannabe DM, a halfling who keeps trying to get their friends to play D&D, but fails because everyone says it's too realistic. Better luck next time, Dylan. Kelvin Noodles, the pasta elemental, hits the town every night in a giant bow tie made of farfalle and spaghetti suspenders. This club's about to get al dente. B-Money, Balnor's hip-hop alter ego, just teamed up with Outkast to release a hot single entitled Boobs of a Baghdad. Andre3000 calls it his best work to date. Andrew A, a chef who makes the stickiest buns in all of Hillholm. Also, Martha Togold's personal enemy. J, a flightless kiwi aricocra. They basically look like a giant fuzzy lollipop. Aw, oh, sweet A's, mate. Heartless Master, sold their heart to Akarat in exchange for infinite power. They can still get heartburn though, and they get it bad. CC Lulu, an expert Shadowfell doll maker who has never once made a doll that didn't get haunted and come to life. What a track record. Paul B, a clumsy wizard who recently invented the can't trip cantrip. Unfortunately, while they were writing down the spell, they tripped and spilled ink all over the scroll. Better luck next time, Paul. Barnes and Ader, a powerful warlock who can turn any building into a Barnes and Noble. It might seem like a useless power, that is, until you're in a public place and desperately need to pee. Bless you, Barnes and Ader. Shane M, a hermit who lives on the shell of a giant turtle dragon. It's under water a lot, and Shane can't get mail delivered, but it is rent stabilized, so uh, what are you gonna do? Yasmin, a famous Bohemian cartoon character known as the Yasmanian Devil. Once played basketball for the fate of Bohemia alongside Bullywog's Bunny and Bev's uncle, Daffling Duck. Trigger Happy, the gun-toting crick who Cobb trained instead of Deadeye, has two powerful pistols named Brooks 
and gun. Not very clever, but a great shot. Eric G, the jeweled giant! Eric's body is made of precious stones. They make a living selling their diamond toenails to the nobles of Galateron. Jackalope Oddity, a giant jackalope that Apple Scrumper rides around the field. They also have an udder, which no one ever mentions, but everyone privately thinks is pretty cool. And that's all our council members. Thank you all so much for pledging your loyalty to us. Head over to patreon.com slash nadpod if you would like to become a patron and hear the short rest. We appreciate you all and hope you have a great day. Bye-bye. That was a HeadGum Podcast.